And it looks like we're live. All right. So I'm going to start off with uh, talking about why I'm here. <laughs> My name is Ray. I am the admin of the Small YouTubers Boost Facebook group with now over 64,000 members. And I am here because I believe that everyone deserves a fair shot at YouTube. But YouTube's gotten pretty complicated over the years. And uh, understandably, anything successful is going to kind of grow at a certain rate. But it's gotten so complicated that it's almost like without specific information, you don't necessarily have your fair shot. So I want to demystify it. I want to tell people what's up. Is this live stream even working? I'm having trouble seeing it. I want to demystify it so everyone's got a fair shot. Sorry. Um, I can't get the live stream up. Let me see if I can get it up on this screen here. Do 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 refresh. Oh, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> there are three people watching. Uh, just oh, you know what it is? It's the glitch. It's the glitch I talked about in the Facebook group today. Uh, this is not actually showing up on the channel, so I have to go directly to it. So hopefully I can get into chat. Sorry, chat. I can't see you yet. All right, now I can see chat. Okay. Uh, ba 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 ba. Pop out chat. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm just getting everything set up here. All right, looks like... Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyways, yeah, I believe that... Uh, I'm just going to kind of vamp here <laughs> while I'm sharing this video uh, in a variety of places so that we can get a good audience going. Uh, ba, 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 close that. But anyways, yeah, I believe that everyone deserves a fair shot at YouTube. And so what I'm trying to do is take whatever it is that I've learned and share it so that everyone gets that fair shot. And so whether you succeed or not should come down to your talent, the strength of your idea, uh, you know, stuff like that. It shouldn't be, in my opinion, whether you know the secrets of YouTube, because that doesn't necessarily, like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right to me. I think that um, it should be about more than knowing the secret code, where the little buttons hit it, where the setting is, what you need to do, how you game the algorithm, all that kind of stuff. It's like, you know what, if you hustle for it, if you, you know, you work hard, you got some talent, you got a good idea, um, then I think those are the reasons why people should be successful on YouTube. And so that's what I want to do is demystify it as much as my humble learnings can do. And I'm just vamp, vamp, vamping while I share, share, share this in a bunch of different Facebook groups, and then you'll have my full undivided attention. Um, as per usual, this live stream has two, maybe three rules. First rule is I'm not going to be subscribing to anyone. The reason for that is I don't want people just trying to sell me on their channels and chat. I want this to be hopefully more useful than gaining just one subscriber. I want it to be about learning the tools, tricks, methods, ideas that will get you many subscribers over hopefully many years. Uh, the second thing is, is I'm not going to be watching any video. Let me turn off my speakers right now. I don't want any content ID issues. I don't you think I'm trying to host your content. I absolutely am not. But um, uh, one video could eat up my entire time. I've got probably at least an hour I can give you. I'll give you as much time as I can, but no promises necessarily. Life has a way of getting in the way. And uh, yeah, and then and, uh, honestly, the third rule, uh, just because it's come up before, is I'm going to be talking YouTube. I'm not going to be banging out as many channel reviews as possible, and I might not be uh, doing exactly what you ask. I'm gonna, it's going to be a conversation. It's going to be fluid. It's going to be organic, but I'm not, uh, I'm not your monkey just to do a bunch of channel reviews. <laughs> I'm, here to, I'm here to help in a variety of ways. I do tutorials. I answer questions. Uh, I try to give people ideas. So it's not just channel reviews. Uh, so those are the rules, and there we go. Um, so let's get into it. Amanda's right life. Hello. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, I, I see that you're, you're shifting the nature of your channel um, towards, I believe, Pokemon gaming. So wish you the best of luck with that. Uh, I've given you a couple of reviews in the past, so I hope you don't mind if I skip you unless you have a specific question uh, or something that you'd like me to show. Oh, you're getting Talency. Cool. Yeah, I uh, I have Talency. I haven't used it as much as I would like to. Uh, they gave me the graphic uh, that I use in my Facebook profile picture, and they also did a thumbnail for me. I was just kind of testing it out. Uh, I haven't done the, like, the channel meeting thing, so... Um yeah, the OBS tutorial. I mean, that was great. Two members in the group have really uh, stepped up with those member uh, tips because I learned stuff like the box I'm in right now was going to be larger. But then somebody commented about hold down alt and you can make the box smaller. I'm like, oh, my God, that's awesome. I'm doing it. So um, that's cool. Um, but anyways, yeah, Amanda says she can she can be skipped. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, 
Uh, so crazy enigma two zero eight five. Hello, and um, yeah, well you were second personally, but that's fine. Uh, what's up, the sky? That's old school. You're a tree. <laughs> uh, I changed my picture. Are you proud? So I I must have reviewed you before. Which is funny, the name doesn't ring a bell, which is interesting, because a, a, a close friend of mine uses Enigma in his email. And you'd think I'd remember, but let's go take a look. Let's see what's what. Oh, Reese! There we go. Sorry, I don't remember. Was that always your channel name, or was it something else? Hey guys, my name is Reese. I make sketch videos. Oh, right, I've been meaning to go look at your channel, because I like sketch comedy. I, I'd love to see that. Um... Uh, so again, channel description here, uh, capitalize the I. Uh, you may have already done it, and it might not have just filtered through, but if you haven't, uh, when you have the letter I standing as its own word, it should be capitalized every time. Uh, I enjoy playing video games, so if you like that sort of thing, then please. That's pretty good. Um, and so what I would recommend is trying to cut out unnecessary words so you can get to the point faster. Uh, so cut out the hey guys. Um, maybe not even my name is Reese. It's like, this is Reese. I make sketch videos, uh, and, uh, and something video games. Uh, you know, is it, is it a playthrough? Is it a review? Is it comedic review? Something more about the video games. You enjoy playing them. That's fine. Why is that going to make people want to watch? What, what are you doing with the video games? Um, and so, and then you can just jump right into selling it more efficiently, uh, is my advice. 140 videos, 91 subscribers, um, that's kind of a cool logo. It is it is definitely like the CE I can absolutely see uh, all over. Uh, let me just see chat here. But you would need to update your banner. That's cool. You said my E looked like a B. Well, it certainly doesn't now. Oh, yeah, that, that's ringing a bell. My memory is crap. I apologize. It's not you. It's me. Um, but, yeah, cool. Uh, all right, Goblin215. Can I get a review? So, yeah, Goblin was... Uh, <laughs> He was breaking my balls a little bit in a previous uh, chat because, uh, uh, previous live stream, because I wasn't just, you know, banging out the reviews. Um, and so I, I hope that my response wasn't deemed too rude. It was just sort of I needed to, uh, I needed to kind of clarify uh, what was going on. But I'm all too happy to give you your channel review. So that is absolutely what I'm going to do. I just, I think I got, I think I got cheese on my mouse pad. Hold on. <laughs> I was very quickly having dinner before going live. Uh, I was having some pizza. Anyways, okay. And the funny thing is, is I believe um, I believe if you joined Nicholas or someone else was doing a live stream and they took a look at your channel. I actually watched some of that. Not that I remember it particularly well because my memory is crap, but that's me, not you. Um, but uh, Achilles Melee also checked out your channel as well. And he was mentioning to me on the side that apparently you do retro gaming stuff, which is actually kind of my jam. Uh, so I'm looking forward to checking out your channel. Um, assuming I'm not giving my getting my people and my goblins confused. It's entirely possible. Um, far from perfect. That's a cool picture. Um, in chat, it um, it scales pretty small, so I just knew that it was green on black. But at the channel search um, results screen, that is that is really sharp. I wish it scaled better. Um, I don't know why it doesn't. I don't have the graphic background to really say that. It's interesting. I see a second channel here where there's another like a gold tinge version of that, and it says vault. Um, but there's no description on that, so I don't know what that is. That's interesting. I mean, maybe it's your behind-the-scenes stuff. Maybe it's all live stream snippets that, for some reason, aren't on your real channel. Maybe it's, um, uh, you know, outtakes or something like that. Um, but I'm just kind of curious uh, about that. Um, because there's no description, it doesn't tell me what it is. So I would, if that is, I mean, either it's an imposter... Uh, and if it is, go report them. But if it is you, a description just saying what it is uh, how, and how it relates to your primary channel, I think is a good idea because it is coming up third, uh, sorry, fourth in search results here. Uh, so I'm seeing some Let's Play, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie on Genesis. Never played that. I played Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo once because I had a free rental at like my local rental place. Uh, and like I had played everything else there or like I, everything else was checked out. And I, you know, it's the classic thing that I think a lot of kids uh, in in the 80s and 90s did is like, you know, you had your Friday and maybe if you had a job, you got paid or maybe if you had an allowance, you had money from that when you're in high school or whatever. <coughs> maybe elementary school as well. Um, and, uh, you know, you go in, you, you like, I, what I would do is I go to the 7-Eleven, I get like a little bag of chips, uh, uh, like a super big gulp and I would go rent a video game. And like, that was the core of my weekend. Uh, and so I, I missed that. I, I missed that, uh, quite a bit. In fact, it was my missing that that made me go out and put, um, 
uh, Ninja Turtles on the Super Nintendo, uh, Turtles in Time on my wish list, and then I got that a couple years ago, and it's kind of still the gem of my collection. I think it's one of the more high-value games I've got. Before I go too far here, don't worry, I'm going to get back to that, I just want to see... Um, it was an experiment, an experiment channel. Okay, that's cool. Um, I mean, it doesn't seem to be interfering with search results necessarily, so I don't think it's doing you any harm that it's out there. Uh, how's my audio, everyone? I know in a couple of previous live streams, um, <clears throat> TubeBuddy incoming. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be hyping TubeBuddy at some point, I'm sure. Just, it's super useful. But anyways, how is the audio? Um, just because I want to, uh, uh, I know I had a couple echoes in the past and they got really bad. And so someone in the group was messaging me um, and uh, I tried to adjust both my OBS settings and my system settings to hopefully reduce that. But the problem with the echo was, is it was intermittent and that's not how digital stuff works. Anyways, it looks like, okay, Dizzy Life and Achilles Melee says the audio seems fine. So cool. Let me know if it becomes a problem because digital stuff shouldn't have intermittent problems. <laughs> It shouldn't work that way. That's an analog world thing. Anyways. Okay, welcome to the Goblin215 channel, where I bring retro gaming to you. I also do live streams on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and... That's cool. Um, the only words I would consider dropping is the and channel. Welcome to Goblin215, where I bring you. It would be fine. Where I bring retro games to you. Um, and that way, maybe it'll fit in a little bit more information. Um, and again... <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, pizza and my Krispy Kreme. Uh, uh, then um, I don't think people are searching those those words that I'm recommending you remove. Um, the and channel, basically. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty good. You got a healthy amount of subscribers. Your subscriber to video ratio is pretty good. 103 videos to 872 subscribers. Let's dive in here. Sorry if I sound a little bit off. I uh, I think I had food poisoning. <clears throat> just recently, I was uh, I was headed into uh, Walmart to buy toilet paper and soup because the soup was on for like fifty seven cents, and I needed toilet paper. I was like pretty much out, and there are these there were these plants along the way, and just suddenly with like no notice, I just had to turn and vomit into one of the plants. <laughs> I felt bad, and then I'm I'm, I'm there outside of Walmart, and I'm like I'm out of toilet paper. I can't not go buy the toilet paper, <laughs> so I went in and I got the toilet paper and the soup. I you know I, I got through it. I got home and then I was sick again. I was sick all night. And anyways, I've been I've been fine for for a while. I don't think I've been sick since like nine o'clock Friday night was the last time. So uh, it was like almost exactly twenty four hours. I don't know what happened, but if I seem off, it's residual from that. Okay, so let's see the banner. I like the gooey ooze thing. That's kind of cool. Uh, live streams, edited gameplay, digital entertainment. Right, I remember seeing this when I think it was Nicholas was reviewing your channel, and I gotta ask, what the hell is digital entertainment? Nothing personal, but, like, that tells me nothing. It's the internet, everything's digital. <laughs> it's YouTube, everything is either entertaining or educational, I think. I, I don't, like... If there is another category out there, I'd love to hear it, but, but I, I think that everything could be categorized as either entertaining or educational, and a lot of educational stuff is also entertaining. Um, but maybe there are some things that are completely dry and just information, and I could see that. But um, so, like, it feels like it's not a great use of space. <clears throat> So, um, there's just, there's just that. Also, it's interesting because all of the, the graphic, well, not all of, because there's like that, that purple blue, um, like brick wall, brick wall background that's a little bit there, but most of the stuff is in the top two thirds of the banner. So I wonder about centering it on the vertical a little bit more. I mean, that's a design element. That's a style thing. So there's no right or wrong answer. Just something I'm thinking about. But um, yeah, digital entertainment doesn't tell me anything. So like, is there is there comedy sketches? Is there uh, hilarious reviews? What kind of, uh, what's the third thing? Because for me, digital entertainment doesn't actually provide information. Anyways, enough rant about that. It's just, it, it, it frustrates me in the Facebook group because people constantly say like, you know, and I've ranted about this before, it's like, you know, a uh, legit entertaining content. And I'm like, you've said no words. You've said no words that have information. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone there has a YouTube channel. Everyone's, like I said, everyone's probably trying to be entertaining and like 9% maybe just educational. But, you know, the words contain no information. They're just filler. And so I can't approve those posts if that's all that there is for it. 
And it's frustrating because sometimes I think the video might be good. It might not. I don't know. But it's like the, the creator is not giving their own video a fair shot because they couldn't find two words to describe it that have actual meaning explaining the value and the, the information. So anyways, that's just a thought there. So you got some social links here. You got a Facebook page. Uh, that link looks pretty good. I like the URL there. Um, you link to a Twitter account that is Sutter Kane. Uh, which is interesting. Um, seems slightly off-brand. Um, maybe that's your name or your personal account or something. Uh, so I mean, if it's about your channel, actually, let's take a click. Let's take a quick look here. Okay, it looks really on-brand actually. Um, yeah, it seems to be largely about it. It's interesting though because the the account there. Yeah, I mean, how many followers you've got? Wow, seven hundred sixty-two followers on Twitter. 3, 000, over 3,000 likes, over 6,000 tweets, that's pretty good. Um, so not so much for you, but other people. I mean, if you've got a personal Twitter, maybe creating another one for your channel is a good idea. I think you're, you've are you made so much progress on Twitter, I wouldn't want to lose that. Um, but like, I have my personal Twitter, which is cowman, cow underscore man. Uh, and then for my channel, I created at VK Impossible, and then I created another one for Small YouTubers Boost, just so I could keep everything kind of in its cage. Like, I try not to talk about politics on Vacation Impossible or Small YouTubers Boost, but that's the kind of thing I'd probably talk about on my Cowman account, because it's all just kind of personal. Uh, and so that also helps with branding uh, and stuff like that. So again, I, th I think you've, you've, you've gotten to a point of so much success on Twitter, it's not a good idea to start a new account now. Uh, you'd start. You'd be starting from behind. It's just a thought that I had that might apply to other people. Uh, you got Streamlabs there, which is a thing I've been meaning to learn about. Uh, you're up on Instagram, which is good. I think uh, YouTubers should just be on Instagram, even if all you do is post your thumbnails. At least it's something. At least you're present there, so that other people can't come along and pretend to be you on that platform. We've actually. Small YouTubers Boost has recently had a problem where there's another group out there that's created in September and they're pretending to be us. Um, they actually copied our first four rules and then added like another four. So they've got lots of rules. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm less than thrilled. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, what you gonna do? <laughs> in a way, it's flattering because, you know, they're and, and I mean, like with with people who do uh, some live stream channel reviews because they've seen these. There's a couple people I know that I've inspired to do that. And that is hugely flattering. That is really nice. I don't consider that competition because it's another perspective, another voice, another person trying to help where I don't have the time. But uh, a group that's kind of treading on our good name. I don't like as much because I know inevitably I'm going to get messaged by somebody who had like a bad experience in that other group and they're going to think it's me and that I can fix it and I, I won't be able to. So anyways, that's just a thing that's going on. Uh, and you're up on Twitch, which makes sense for a gamer. The following channel has been approved to be appropriate for all retro gamers by other awesome retro gamers. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, hold on a second here. I have a question. That's interesting. I really like that, um, you know, that like, you know, the movie trailer thing. And then I what caught my eye is at the very bottom in, in a very clear way. It's really quite visible, which is nice, but it's got the URL for your channel, but it's not a custom URL. So, I mean, you've got actually 913 subscribers. The other count was obviously behind and that happens on search results. They don't refresh as frequently as the channel. Um, this is nine months ago. Um, and so either you've grown really rapidly or you haven't yet got yourself a custom URL. Uh, and I would really recommend doing that because, um, sadly, just no one's going to type that out. Um, because it's like, you know, the, these sort of random Java type characters. So, um, as much as possible, if you, um... If you, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, no, it's not the editor's channel. Um, yeah, so I mean, custom URL would also help with search and stuff as well if it's uh, a word that's useful. Um, just thinking about SEO and optimization opportunities, since your name is Goblin, uh, I don't know if you've done Spider-Man games with the Green Goblin, but that would have some keyword alignment. Oh, okay, I see some Venom here. That's a, oh, trailer reaction. But um, like my Vacation Impossible channel is about vacations and it's in the name vacation. So I'm hoping that there's an SEO uh, synergy there uh, that, that, that could help. And so I'm just thinking, you know, the Green Goblin is a villain, um, you know, that might have, you might be able to have an advantage on that search term. It's just a thought. Even if it's spelled differently, it, it, um, the algorithm probably would, would link the two. Uh, you suggest some great YouTubers, which is awesome. 
Um, you don't have the popular slash related channels enabled. I recommend you do that. The algorithm, I think, will favor you. Oh, hey, you did do the Power Rangers game for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember it very well. Actually, you know what? It's funny. I picked it up at Portland Retro Gaming Expo a couple years ago. I haven't even cleaned it yet, much less actually tried it. Uh, hopefully it's the right game. I was the first time, <laughs> first time I went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo was like 2015. I was so excited to be there. I was gonna see Pat Contry and Ian Ferguson, and um, like Brental Floss was there, and uh, the AVG, uh, AVGN van from the movie was there, and I was all excited. And I walked in, and I went to like the first dealer table I saw, and uh, I really liked, uh, and so did my son. He really enjoyed Pat Contry, Pat the NES Punk's review of um, Russian Attack. And so I'm like, because like we had been on a cruise in Grand Turk, and we were swimming in Grand Turk, and my kid's talking about how much he liked that review. Like that's how that's how into it he was. So I'm like, I'm gonna get that game, and it was five bucks, and I knew five bucks was a fair price for that game. So I bought it, and I brought it home, and I cleaned it, and it was Commando. <laughs> and so I've got this cart that the outside is Russian Attack, the inside is Commando. They're both five dollar games. There is no advantage to mixing those up. I don't know how it happened. I asked several people. I've asked my local game uh, shop. Uh, there's a place in New Westminster here in, near Vancouver called uh, Game Over, which is awesome. Shout out to them. And I've asked some other people. And the best theory is, is um, that a pawn shop might have been cleaning them and accidentally put the wrong board back into the wrong case. Because there's just no profit in doing it. But now I've got this NES cart that, I mean, it's kind of counterfeit. I can't. I, I'm not going to sell it to somebody else and, and pass that, you know, bad karma along. I'm thinking like one day I'll pack it full of firecrackers and just make it explode it or something. I don't know. But then I'm destroying something that's from the air and I don't want to do that. So anyways, that's a little sidebar. That's my own little problem. And it wouldn't be on brand with my channel. So I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a gaming channel that has an... Actually, that's a great idea. If there's a gaming channel out there that has an idea on something to do with that cart, maybe we can get it to you and do something with that because it's an abomination. <laughs> Commando's not that bad a game, but it's not... I did later buy another Russian Attack for like $4, and I played it, and so it's all right. But um, yeah, Russian Attack's better than Commando in my mind. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Looks like you got a good channel layout there. Uh, you got a decent amount of playlists. Actually, just going back to the main channel one more time. Pausing that video. I think the description on your channel trailer could be bolstered a little bit. Um... And I think the name, you could have an opportunity because like a channel trailer is also a video uh, that you want to optimize. So, you know, if you said, um, you know, Goblin 215 channel trailer, uh, you know, retro games and live streams and more, something like that. You've got those keywords of live streams and retro games in the title, in the description, and then hopefully in the tags, and then it can align. Along with your channel, the keywords I find that you use commonly throughout many videos, it really helps the algorithm. And the two buddy suggestions I get often kind of uh, reflect that. Um, okay, here's okay digital entertainment. So it's kind of like it looks like movie reviews, trailer reactions, sort of a Kickstarter. So yeah, that's kind of genre stuff. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you say here movie trailers, indie games, entertainment, and more. Um, so for your banner. I think like movie slash trailer reviews or movie slash trailer reactions might be better than digital entertainment. Uh, that might be more descriptive. It might not capture everything, but I think it's it's enough. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to see, I would also recommend a most uh, a popular videos panel. Uh, that's something that I think is a is a good idea. Um, and maybe even an uploads panel. I noticed that those two standards I'm not really seeing here, um, but you know it's just a thought. You you do what works well for you. Um, so, uh, TubeBuddy plug time. Uh, I have an affiliate down below, so you can download TubeBuddy, the browser plugin website and app if you don't already have it. Um, but this video is not sponsored. Uh, it's a tool that I use every day, <laughs> and I would be freaking lost without it. Uh, and so one of the reasons I'm mentioning it right now is I'm about to use one of, it, one of the functions. So when you install it um, into your browser, uh, it adds different functionality, including this one here, Channelytics. And I have a tutorial here on this video, small, um, on this channel, Small YouTubers Boost, uh, about how to use Channelytics to look at other people's channels as well as your own. It gives you a lot of useful information that people often miss. A little pro tip, if this loading thing happens, you just switch over to views and then switch back to subscribers and it'll load. That's how you get it to refresh. 
so, and actually just earlier today, I recorded a new tutorial for TubeBuddy that I'm going to put out probably in a, I don't know, sometime in the next week, maybe, uh, talking about um, uploads and uh, keywords and stuff like that. So uh, subscribe for that. Uh, so you know when that comes out, uh, hopefully that'll be really useful for people. So um, let's see what's going on here. Um, the channel tags, you have video and games. So I think that could be bolstered quite a bit. Uh, and again, um, you want to put those together, put quotes around them or commas around them uh, in your um, channel settings for your channel keywords, and then it'll group them together. Smaller channels do better with longer tail keywords because those shorter ones are super competitive. And so you need to have like lots of views and subs to get algorithmic advantage on those rankings. But for the longer tail ones, you, you can compete more at the smaller YouTube level. So um, yeah, retro video games uh, is obviously one that you're gonna wanna put in there. Uh, and uh, you know, live streams and other things that you do, maybe uh, maybe look at your most watched video and consider some of the some of the search terms for that. You might want to put into the channel as well. Uh, your subscriber growth is amaze balls. Um, like you've like the most channel, the most subscribers I ever got on Vacation Impossible, my primary channel is I think eleven in a day, and the most I've ever gotten here on Small YouTubers Boost is twenty in a day, and you've crushed that. So that's awesome. Uh, so you're doing very well in subscriber growth. Um, okay, looks like there was an audit of your channel uh, that looks like it cost you views. Uh, I've been there. I sympathize. I lost over a thousand views in one day once. Um, and so for anyone who doesn't know what that's all about is that uh, YouTube periodically does audits. I don't know exactly how. It's one of their closely guarded secrets, but they try to determine if views are legitimate or not. And so here's an example. I had a video come out a couple years ago, 2015, I think, um, 2016 maybe where it was, um, I think it was us on the Carnival Sunshine. And so I sent it to a friend of mine and she shared it with all the people in her office and they all watched it and they enjoyed it really like on the first day. And there's like a hundred people in her office. And so I saw my view count go up by like a hundred and then later it dropped by like a hundred. And so the best theory I have is that YouTube did a quick little audit on those views and because they all came from the same office and these were people who had never viewed my channel before, they probably all had very similar IP addresses. And so they probably thought that it was like a, like a bot farm in Russia or India or Indonesia or some other place. Um, well, I guess it would have been here in Vancouver because they have the IP account, but whatever. They probably thought it was like a bot uh, or a bunch of people that had been paid or a scam or something. So they took those views away from me. And that annoyed me <laughs> because I knew they were legitimate. So it's not always accurate. It's not always a fair deal. So uh, I really want to put that out there to people who are in the group or just whatever. When you're looking at other channels like on Social Blade, and I think we'll check Goblin out on Social Blade in a second. Um, when you see negative view counts, don't automatically assume that they've done something nefarious, that they bought views, they used a farm, or they were trying, like, whatever. Because it can happen uh, on completely innocent misunderstanding terms. And so I really hesitate and, and caution people against jumping to that conclusion. I see it happening in the group a little bit. It feels kind of toxic. I, I wish there was a way I could discourage it beyond just calling it out right now. But, yeah, um, just don't don't judge when you see when you see that. Oh, scratch what I said. It looks like he deleted 130 videos. All right. And so that would have had the corresponding views go away. So people, for people who ask that question, new YouTubers, they're like, if I delete a video, do I lose the views? Yeah, there it is. It's happening right there. Uh, and it looked like you put up 26 v videos in one day, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if you're re-releasing remasters of old videos and then deleted the old ones, or I don't know what was going on there. Um, normally, I criticize that kind of behavior, but watching your sub growth... You seem to be onto something. You seem to be working well for you. And, you know, the views that you're getting are, you know, uh, they're, they're pretty good. So, I mean, normally I recommend people smooth that out and do mo no more than one video per day. But um, uh, this, se this seems to be working for you. And, I mean, that's about how to game the algorithm. But there's so many other ways to get views, including social media. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's fine. I'm going to check in with chat and see what's happening. Where do you add channel tags? Here, I'll show you. Live tutorial. We're doing it live. Go into your creator studio. Wait, hold on. Stop. Before I do that, um, I'm going to play around here with a sec just for a second. Uh, there's certain things that you're not supposed to share. Um, and so about monetization and stuff, and I don't want to piss off YouTube, so I'm just going to kind of cover up that part of my screen right now. 
Um, it's not that I want to keep it secret. It's that I don't want to piss off AdSense. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me see if I remember how to do this. You go into channel in Creator Studio, and I believe it's advanced. There we go. And doo -doo -doo. there you go. So that's where you can um, change your channel, your channel keywords. Uh, you can see just, uh, there's always partial dyslexia. I get my left and rights confused. Right there, right there. And so you'll see, um, for example, here, I have quotation marks around cruise tips. So then when you go to my channel, Vacation Impossible, you'll see cruise tips as a single keyword, or yeah, see a single keyword that has multiple words. Uh, and that's one of the ways you can do it. You can also use commas. I find quotes work better, but that's just me. Um, doesn't make too much of a difference. And so then here, I'll just quickly show you my channel. So you can see that in action. Go over to, pause my thing here, Channelytics for my channel. Do, 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 do. And then you see cruise tips there is a single keyword. Uh, and so you see some of the stuff I've done, like my most popular video is James Darren, so I put that keyword in there. Um, How to Dress for Alaska is my second most popular video. I've got some keywords in there about that. My third most popular video is the Grand Canyon West Rim, so I put in a keyword about that. Hopefully I know what I'm doing, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, all a matter of opinion, I suppose. But there you go. Quick live tutorial about how to, uh, how to do that. Um, oh, you still have the videos. You just made them private. Okay. Oh, you're revamping your channel. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Ted. That's, that's, that is a huge compliment. I do have some experience because I've, uh, this is, I think, my 26th live stream for channel reviews. And I've also appeared on the Mario Marathon for two years running. Um, so uh, hopefully that experience is paying off. Peak Time Racing, glad to see you here. I've looked at your channel before. Uh, did you want a channel or video? I, I won't review a video, but I'll look at like the description and tags. Uh, or is there something else that you want me to take a look at? I'd be all too happy to. Um, if you're still around, but uh, as I recall, you've got a huge subscriber count, uh, and you're actually here in the same area. Mind is blown. <laughs> I'm not sure. For, I, I guess that's the, the keywords for your channel. It's weird that they hide them in advanced. That is a strange label to put on that, because it seems super basic. Um, and when I think when I first signed up for YouTube in 2006, when I first started uploading in 2008, I think it was easier to find. It was like part of the create a channel process. Um, anyways, I'm thinking that Peak Time Racing is probably not still around, so I'll move on to the next person. If you are here, Peak Time, feel free to speak up. Uh, since you're verified, I'll see it fairly easily, uh, and then I can address whatever your request might be. Who else we got here? Achilles, <laughs> you just ended your stream. How'd your stream go, man? Oh, but you got to go soon. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you're not even here anymore. Um, fan channel. Really good now. Might be lagging a bit, getting buffers. It's possible. Uh, my internet provider allegedly doubled my speed, but uh, I haven't done a, a speed check on it. I think Achilles is probably not here. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, I know him in real life, so he can, if he wants me to look his channel or something else, he can always ask me about it. <laughs> I'm happy to help. He's been very helpful uh, with giving me advice about uh, different things. Some things I've talked about here on this channel. Okay, so let's see. Who else did we have in chat in order? Oh, Matta T. Sorry, I missed you there. Um, Matta T, are you still here? Do you have a question, tutorial request, channel review, video review? What do you want to look at? If you're still here. This is interesting. I'm not... Hmm. Is my chat refreshing? Do I understand Spanish? No, unfortunately, I don't. I, I speak English fluently, um, and uh, uh, I speak some French, but that and a tiny bit of Klingon. Uh, but that's about it. <laughs> um, do you want to collab sometime? Uh, I yeah, collabs. I don't know that I have time to commit to it, and I I still owe BJ a collab, so I I need to do a collab with him first. Uh, I was going like crazy on collabs when I was trying to get a thousand subscribers and saying yes to everything that I could. But I've come to a point where it's like um, the time that I invest in a collab, I've been investing a small YouTuber's boost instead. So I don't know. I mean, if you have an idea that's, that you think is really on brand, feel free to let me know. But I, I just honestly don't think I could commit to anything at this time. And so I'm sorry about that because uh, I would like to. But it's only so many hours in the day. 
Gary Dunlop, I'm pretty sure I've looked at your thing before. Uh, it looks like you're next on the list. Is there anything that you want? Um, skips for me too. Okay, no worries. Uh, happy to happy to do that. Uh, and I've noticed you've been commenting a lot of the, on the videos here on this channel, so thank you for that. I really like the interaction. Uh, I did a thank you post to Ray. Don't know if he saw it. I think maybe. Feel free to tag me uh, if you didn't already. I think so, though. There was one or two that people had posted after one of my previous live streams, and that was really quite touching, I have to say. Um, the, the fact that I might be actually helping people I've never met is really exciting. Um, and actually, on that note, I'm going to be in late July, early August on this epic road trip from Victoria on the west coast of Canada uh, to Indianapolis and back. So I'm going to be stopping in a whole lot of interesting places, Mount Rushmore, uh, Sioux Falls, Chicago, St. Louis, Kansas City, Denver, Salt Lake City, uh, and and the future uh, birthplace of Captain Kirk, and a couple other places. So, I mean, if it makes sense for us to meet up, it's going to be pretty rushed. So other than in Indianapolis, I don't think I'm going to have much time. And frankly, when I'm in Indianapolis, I'll be hanging out with the Martin Marathon team for the most part. I'm going for Gen Con. But uh, hey, if we could meet up and grab a burger together, if there's uh, people who are interested or something, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, you know, we could do like an interview or something. Um, maybe I could collab that way. That would be easier to fit in. Uh, but, 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 but. I'm curious what you mean, Crazy Enigma, about um, people have let you down in collabs, because that can mean a lot of different things. Uh, for me, the collabs that I've done... Oh, it wouldn't let you tag. Oh, that's weird. Uh, PM me a link to the post on Facebook. Uh, I'm bad at checking my messages. Uh, I don't have Facebook Messenger on my phone, uh, because that's how I maintain my sanity while being the admin of the group. So I only sit down and check messages on a desktop when I have a little bit of dedicated time so I can focus on it. And honestly, a lot of the messages I get are pretty abusive. Uh, and so I'm like, I try to make sure I'm in like a positive mental headspace before I sit down and check my Facebook messages. Um, so, but please uh, PM me a link uh, and I will check it out the next time I'm in a good mental health space. <laughs> uh, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I've done collabs where I did voiceover work for people, uh, where I did things like um, for tutorials on video games, like Command and Conquer uh, Generals, uh, and some other things. I've done some some character voiceover work. That was really fun. I really enjoyed doing that. Where it was like I played the rough general who you know I don't I can't do the voice right now because my throat's still recovering from all that vomiting. Um, but like I, I I really enjoyed that, and so I appeared on a lot of podcasts. I really enjoyed that too. Uh, and so it depends on what your expectations for a collab is. What I like in a collab is a fun experience and maybe I learned something. Um, and that's how I evaluated it. Could I commit to it? Do I think I could do it? Do I think I could bring value or something unique or would it be fun? Because then I said yes. So that way, and I said yes before I checked on their channel to see what kind of p potential exposure I might get. I say yes or no, and then look at the social blade later. And so I admit a lot of the collabs I've done didn't help me um, grow my channel. Uh, even appearing on the Mario Marathon uh, for the last couple years, it helped me the first year a little bit, the second year not so much, and it actually tanked my Instagram following. So that was something I learned. As I grew like 1% to 3% or something uh, on most of my social media things during that Mario Marathon appearance, which at the time was good growth, um, but my Instagram, I lost 11% of my followers for posting like one Mario Marathon picture. It was insane. Instagram is savage if you go off brand, at least that in my experience. Um, where am I from? I was born in Portland, but I live in Vancouver, so all about the West Coast of North America. Any plans to come to Asia? Um, not really. I w there's a cruise to Singapore that my friend Sam is going to be taking that I'm super jealous and would love to go on. Um, but I haven't uh, any plans to Asia, just partly because I'm allergic to so much Japanese food, for one thing, but Japan would be cool to visit. Um, and I don't speak any of the languages. Like, I can kind of muddle through with Italian because I know some French. Uh, so I have some anxiety around that, and the flight cost is just astronomical. I haven't been to Europe since 2010 because the flights are insane. Um, Fourteen hundred dollars, like to get to Spain, and I'm like, I just can't justify that. I could take three cruises for that if I know if I get a good deal because I know what I'm doing. So it's hard to say yes to those things. Um, but um, you know, one day, certainly, uh, I want to I want to kind of go everywhere eventually. Uh, so, anyways, let's see who else had chatted um, that I can. Respond to stuff. Always leery of going too far afield off YouTube topics. That dizzy life. Okay, Amanda's Right Life recommended this to me so I could get a review if there's time. Cool, you're up. 
Thanks, Amanda. You're awesome. I also noticed that you comment on a lot of the Small Tubers Boost uh, channel. Uh... Oh, no, my subscriptions weren't visible. <laughs> the secret no one cares about. Um... Just put me in a box. I think that's a good box. Um... Anyways, Amanda, you know, it's, it's awesome how supportive you've been to the Small YouTubers Boost uh, Facebook group and the channel here commenting on videos and stuff. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, I really appreciate that. Comments are so key. And the thing is, they're super useful. Those those interactions help you with the algorithm a lot. Um, but also because of pinning comments, which is something that TubeBuddy recommends in its best practices, um, like... Uh, you can potentially, by being the pinned comment on another video that might take off, you could get a lot of traffic from that. But you need to be doing it in an organic, contributive way. If it's, come check out my channel, it's like, oh. It's like, it's actually, you know, some people were trying to post that, that imposter Facebook group. They're trying to post it in our group. And I'm like, does this violate the rules? And it kind of didn't have a good description. So I'm like, yay, it does. I get to say no. Uh, <laughs> um, but part of it was like going into one group with a complete copy of that group, but with minor changes, is kind of like coming along and saying, hey, this sucks, come to our better version. And that's kind of insulting, I think. And so I try to get past that emotional reaction, trying to you know evaluate the post fairly. Um, but then I think there's a parallel there to people who comment on other channels and do that. Uh, and so like, you know, if you're going to do something, commenting on another channel, probably keeping it on brand is smart. I don't. I keep commenting on news clips. From Vacation Impossible, and I maybe I shouldn't do that. I don't think that's helpful. Um, but uh, you know, commenting in in your niche is better than generally probably. Um, and, but then within your niche, you have to give value. Say something funny. Say something encouraging. Offer a suggestion. Something like that. But if you're just like, hey, I do this too. Come check out my channel. That can sound entirely positive to you, but to that creator, it's almost like. Well, your crap come come see my stuff that's better. I mean, they might not take it that way. That's kind of a dark, uh, you know, um, way of looking at it. Maybe they don't, um, but it's hard not to see it that way sometimes. So, um, you know, if you're there and you're witty, you're funny, you got a new idea, a suggestion, whatever it is, you're helpful in some way. Then people might click on you through that comment to check you out because they like the way you wrote your comment. Maybe they think you write well, um, and so those one of those opportunities. And so. Uh, since TubeBuddy suggests, and and it makes sense to me, to pin at least to pin a comment for every video, I try and do that on Vacation Impossible. I got tons of videos that no one ever commented on. If someone did, I would pin it, and you never know when those things could blow up. You might be able to ride the coattails. Uh, but just make sure you do it in a respectful, value-added way. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be effective because maybe you'll get the only comment, but it's showing that maybe you're a jerk, <laughs> depending on what you write. And you don't want to do that. You want to present your best stuff forward. So that is um, something to consider. Uh, but it's good to engage with other people in a, in a positive way, I think. Uh, so that Dizzy Life. Okay, we've got a couple other things coming up, Dizzy Life and A Dizzy Life. Um but uh, yours is coming up first because of the word that, so there's some alignment there. Uh, TubeBuddy Search Explorer on the right-hand side here with the browser plugin has it as a very good search term, so uh, that's cool. It's interesting. Uh, you did mention collabing with Amanda's Right Life, and that makes sense because that's the third most used tag coming up here. Uh, what's up, weirdos? <laughs> kind of like that. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dizzy. I post every Tuesday and Thursday, please. So I'm going to be a little brutal here, but I have no idea what the hell your channel is about. Uh, I've looked at the picture, I've looked at the name, I've looked at the description, and even looking at the most used tags, I've got no earthly idea. Um, and looking at the videos coming up in search, only one is from you, uh, in That Dizzy Life, introducing That Dizzy Life. It's another day with That Dizzy Life. Uh, here's what helps out my channel. What I film with my background decor. Decor is so far the only word that gives me a clue as to what your channel is about. I'm sorry if that sounds savage or brutal, but I'm trying to make it valuable to you. And if I'm just here and polite and only say nice things, then it's not going to be that helpful. So the best clue I've got here is that you're about interior decorating. And I think that that's probably inaccurate. So um, I kind of like the what's up weirdos thing. I don't know. That speaks to me somehow. Um, but there's a lot of punctuation that's redundant here. Uh, so I think just, uh, what's up, question mark, exclamation mark once. You don't need the second set. Welcome back to my channel. That's, there's a couple issues there. One, it's not searchable. Two, it tells me nothing. Three, I've never been to your channel before. So, uh, at least I don't think. So welcoming me back is just not accurate. So I would drop that sentence. If you're new here, I'm dizzy. 
I would drop off the if you are new here and just say, I'm dizzy. I mean, I guess that kind of addresses the welcome back thing. I get that. Um, but what's up, weirdos? I'm dizzy. I post every Tuesday and Thursday, and my channel is about X, is what I really recommend. It, it needs to be the very next thing, if not even sooner. Um, because in search results, and I've been talking about this now for 26 live streams, uh, on search results for your channel description, it cuts it off really early. There's not a lot of characters there, so you gotta get your message out early. Get the, get the what of what you do out, maybe the how, the why might be better. The what and the why would be great, and the how can come later possibly, depending, but you gotta, you gotta tell people what your channel's about. Anyways, I don't wanna harp on that too much. 15 videos, 13 subscribers, let's dive in. Okay, um, I'm going, wait, hold on, there's no banner. So this is a really young channel. There's a lot of work that needs to be done here and that's totally fine because what that means is you've got a lot of opportunity for big wins. Um, so, you know, you don't have a banner yet. Adding a banner can make a big difference. Uh, things like that. So you got a lot of opportunities uh, for that and that can, that can lead to some potential growth. Uh, and part of me kind of nostalgically misses that part of my channel is when everything was so new that even little things could potentially have a big jump just because they, they can be so core and they don't necessarily uh, take a lot of work. You got featured in popular channels, which is good. Uh, and I think you're new here, so uh, I'm going to repeat myself for, for past guests. But when you become more well-known by the algorithm, uh, by the data, uh, popular channels might convert into related channels. When you see that happen, that's going to be a very good sign because it means that YouTube knows what your channel is about and they're going to display your channel more accurately to potential audiences. But that's something that happens over time through using consistent titles, keywords, and descriptions, and uploading a decent amount of content, captioning videos if you have the time, uh, and covering similar topics and staying on brand as much as you can. That really helps that area. So you're going to want to have a, a banner. Um, if you check out um, some of the information available on uh, sort of the YouTube support documents out there, if basically if you just Google... Um, you know, YouTube banner dimensions. Uh, there's a there's a Google help document uh, that that will you know pop up um, a, a web page basically, and it'll tell you the dimensions. It'll tell you the smallest dimensions and the largest dimensions. So you're gonna want to create something that is as large as the largest dimensions, but has all the vital graphics and text and information in the smallest box. That way, the smallest box will appear on all platforms: mobile, televisions, game consoles, tablets laptops, desktops, so many different things with so many different resolutions and ways of displaying that if get the core stuff in the small box, fill up the whole box, put that up there, that'll help. I'm not seeing any social links. Here on this channel, Small YouTubers Boost, um, there is a video uh, about my Twitter rant about why you should be on Twitter. I recommend you give that a quick watch. Uh, they, they, up until the end of this month, you're able to connect it in a way that every time you upload or add something to a playlist, a tweet will go out. That is ending. But seriously, when you have Twitter or Instagram or whatever else and you tie it into your channel, sharing things is really easy. One of my tricks when I upload a new video uh, on my Vacation Impossible channel is I open up Notepad and I write a, a quick little description about what the video is. Um, so like today I uploaded a video about... Um, people wearing military hats in restaurants and whether or not that was rude because uh, it a, it's a big cruise ship thing and I, I, I cruise a lot. I'm a travel guy. Uh, and so I wrote a couple of versions of that. One for any audience. So when I share it in like a YouTube group. And then I wrote a different version for cruising groups that I'm in. And so when I go to share it, you just click the Twitter icon. It pops up with the link. You can just copy that description and paste it in there. And you can do that for all the things. Um, you know, Google Plus and Facebook and other places. Uh, and so that is a, as just a process. I call it my, my media blitz, my sharing blitz, whenever I have a new video out. Um, and so you write it once, but you copy and paste it in all those places. It's just, then it's just a matter of some clicks. You write one sentence about your video, uh, and then you share it on all these places, and you never know who's going to find it. You, you just you put it out into the world and hope for the best. So I recommend getting some social media accounts. Uh, and I recommend having the names line up with your channel, not your personal name. That will help it stay on brand. For various social media platforms, talking about getting verified, getting that check mark. On YouTube, you need to have like a silver play button. So let's put that aside. But for all the other things, there, it's, it's not always a well understood process. 
And so one of the things the other platforms look for is they will look up your account on other platforms and see if there's a consistent name and a consistent branding, consistent colors and logos and graphics. And if there is consistency, then they think, okay, this is probably legit. And they're much more likely to give you that verification check mark if you have that. So being on a multitude of platforms and being consistent across those platforms with names and graphics and colors is going to increase your likelihood of getting verified on those platforms, which will then lend you credibility in your space. And people know, okay, this is the official one. So if you did blow up overnight, Jimmy Kimmel mentions you one night and you get a million views while you're asleep and you wake up and there's three people pretending to be you out there because of it. If you've got that check mark somewhere, that really helps. So just something to consider. You know, don't be don't be afraid of success. There's this guy, uh, Voss, a former FBI negotiator. I was watching some of his videos last couple weekends. And one of the things he always says, which really stuck with me, was um, don't be so sure of what you want that you won't take a better deal. And I kind of like that. I like that because it's like you can envision success and that's a good thing. Pre-visualization and being prepared for success is a, is a good idea. That's why, you know, locking down your brand name and stuff like that is a good idea. Um, but also keep it loose and fluid. Like maybe one of the like people often ask in the Facebook group, what's your idea of success? What does success look like to you? And I think what would be awesome is if one day I could be like a keynote speaker at something like that would be cool. VidCon or something else. I don't know. Um, and I, I don't know that it'll ever happen, but that would be one way I would define success. But it's it. I'm not married to that. If I never get that, I'm not going to say that I was necessarily a failure. I could be a success on several metrics and in ways I can't even anticipate yet. There could be a social media platform out there I haven't heard of that might just align with my brand or personality or whatever so well that I could I could take off. I could end up being the king of Vero or something, which is this new thing I'm trying out. Uh, it's a social media platform. Uh, without any ads or algorithms, which is kind of cool. And it's easier. The mobile app is way easier than Snapchat, and I don't get Snapchat. So, uh, But anyways, like, who knows? And so, um, but one of the ways that you can kind of prepare yourself for success is by having your username that's tied into your channel locked down across multiple, a multitude of platforms. Uh, so anyways, childhood TV shows from the 2000s, my health problems, penguins, interviewing my manager. I really want to watch that. <laughs> I don't even know what industry you work in. Spoiler alert, my top nine Netflix shows. I guess you talk about spoilers within the shows. Okay. Um, so this is, this is a pretty young uh, channel. There's a lot of different topics being covered. Your time of video goes anywhere from three minutes to 45 minutes, just from these uh, five most recent that I'm seeing here. So I imagine that you're still probably discovering yourself and what you're interested in. And given Amanda's recent experience and possibly shifting and rebranding her channel, um, so you probably have that in common and are able to kind of commiserate with each other about the challenges of that, uh, I can appreciate. Um, let me just take a look here at videos. So very consistent thumbnails. It's good that there's consistency, but the problem is, is it's just text on, on a single solid color. So if you're able to incorporate some form of consistency, so it's identifiable as you, but having it visually uh, a little different is not a bad idea. Um, what you could consider doing is have a background color, like uh, not a background color, a border around the thumbnail in this color of blue. Uh, for example, Toby Creation, who's in the Small YouTubers Boost Facebook group, he's another travel channel. He does that exceptionally well. Uh, it's actually a very similar blue, come to think of it. Uh, another thought is uh, it could be like a banner at the top, and then like the lower two-thirds could be an image of some kind. That might be uh, a way of keeping it consistent but visually dynamic. That's just a thought. Let's see if you got some playlists. Live streams and binge me. So that's fine, but as you develop your channel and create more content, if you can have playlists around a theme, that would be a really good idea. Uh, you know, a, a TV show's playlist, uh, uh, my personal vlog playlist, something like that, that would help uh, with searchability. And then you could also um, add more to your channel. Uh, you might want to consider uh, popular uploads as another banner here. Or not a banner, but another row of video links. That will flush out the channel a little bit more. Ooh, I got a new follower on Tumblr. See what I mean? <laughs> I just got a notification on my phone. Um, so, you know, being on a multitude of social media platforms, you never know where you're going to get an audience from. And so I have a blog on Tumblr, vacationimpossible.tumblr.com. 
Maybe that'll blow up one day. I don't know. The, the metaphor I use for content creators and YouTube, it's like buying a bunch of lottery tickets, but the lottery tickets you don't pay for with money, you pay for with your time and your effort and your ideas. But the thing is, is they're constantly calling numbers. So, you know, in real lottery, you buy it and there's one draw and you, you throw the ticket away if you didn't win. But these tickets, you never know when they're going to get called. I, I have a video from 2010 about me reviewing a soda. <laughs> Like 30 people watched it in its first year, and now it's like nearing 2,000 views or something. Because it, like about a year, two years ago, people suddenly started watching it. Who knows why? But that, that that's like the lottery ticket that you win three bucks on, <laughs> or 10 bucks, or whatever. But the thing is, is these are constantly being drawn. So every social media platform you're on, every video you put out, every time you share something, you know, like a tweet. A tweet is kind of forever. You can ask politicians who have been embarrassed by old ones. Um, and so you put it out there, and it's kind of like a little soldier out working for you. Uh, and you never know when it's going to be successful and come back home with hopefully riches and fame and success, depending on what you want out of life. But uh, that's kind of a cool thing to think about. And so like, if I'm sitting there and I wake up and it's a Saturday, and I'm like, what am I going to do with my time? What is going to be, you know, and so for me, generally speaking, if I'm able to get a video out, that's probably the biggest thing you can ever do to help your channel. And then the other stuff is a little less than that, but those, cause those are the big tickets, those big lottery tickets. Um, and so every time I get that out, I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I've released videos that I thought were going to be duds. I thought were going to fall on their face and were frankly embarrassing. Uh, and they did they did well and maybe got me some subscribers. I've done videos that I poured my heart and soul into that I loved like my children and three people watched them. And you just never know. But then five years later, suddenly it gets picked up somehow. So I think that's kind of cool. I think it's exciting. Uh, let's check the channelytics for this page. So there's no channel tags. Earlier in this live stream, I showed people how to change or add channel tags. So I highly recommend you go in there and do that. Um, at the very least, maybe just add that dizzy life is one, but like TV shows, childhood, medical issues, whatever you want to call it, whatever subjects you want to be known for. Um, that might be a really good idea. Another thing is, is if you have YouTubers that you're fond of, check the link below, download TubeBuddy. Even the free version gives you this Channelytics tool. And then you can go look at their channels and see what their channel tags are and think, oh, hey, right, I should use that. that I, didn't, I didn't think of that. That's totally what I'm all about. They, they just put it better than I could have. Or that's pretty close, but I'm going to change a word because I don't really do, you know, um, maybe, I, maybe I don't do, um, you know, makeup tutorials. I do makeup reviews or, you know, whatever. Um, but that's a great way to gain inspiration and see what the competition is doing and people in your niche. Um, and then there is with TubeBuddy this copy to button where you can just copy them, paste them on notepad, change them or paste them directly into your channel and, and then tweak them or just leave them. Uh, so I, I think that the, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Um, so just looking at your subscriber growth, gained one on December 29th, although the total wasn't showing that for some reason. Okay, views, looking there, videos. Interesting. So I'm, notice, I'm noticing around January 9th to 12th, you had three videos in a row, and you see that there was this bump in your views that corresponded to that. So not a lot of data to work on here because it's a very young channel and that's totally fine. But I, I think you kind of see how having videos come out on a, uh, I hate to say consistent because I don't like when YouTubers put that pressure on themselves, but having videos come out sort of like one a day whenever possible or bare minimum one a week, uh, that can really gain you some advantages algorithmically, even with a very young channel. Uh, and so I do recommend that. Um, and since you haven't been here before, I just want to tell you something about how views are important. The first hour of a video's life is super critical. Uh, and that is when YouTube determines something called view velocity. This is the rate at which you're getting views in that first hour is really critical. It gives them the first sign as to, is this video going to be, uh, you know, a, a superstar or a dud? And it also gives an idea about how engaged your subscribers are, if they have notifications turned on, uh, things like that. Now, I know that, you know, subscribers don't get served up your videos. That's a whole YouTube thing, and I get it, and it's frustrating. Um, but there's also, you know, sharing in Facebook groups and other social media. Uh, so that first hour is really critical. Um, if what I, what I suggest to people is if you're going to upload a video, try to have an hour after the video or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, um, where you're sharing it and you're doing that sharing blitz. I have an Excel file 
uh, where I basically have all my social media accounts. And it reminds me, oh, right, I got Tumblr. Oh, right, I got Flickr. Oh, right, I've got, you know, Instagram or whatever. And so I go through it and I try to share it in all those places appropriately. Reddit, whatever. Uh, and But doing that in the first hour is really critical because that feeds the view velocity. Getting it in the first 24 hours is also good. Getting it in the first week is also good. But you get diminishing returns the later it is. So really that first hour, super critical for sharing. Um, so if you have like a scheduled upload, and I've mentioned this to other people in the Facebook group, they're like, oh, I finally figured out how to schedule. It's deceptively easy, but totally hard, like totally hidden, an option. It took me forever to find the thing. It's just like, oh, it was right there in front of my face the whole damn time. But um, uh, you can schedule things and that's great. But the sharing that you really want to have tied into that. So if you're scheduling it to post when you're at work or asleep or something, it's probably not ideal. I recommend uh, if you do schedule it to post or you just post it yourself, make sure you've got 15, 30 minutes afterwards, at least an hour would be ideal to go and share it and engage with your audience on other platforms, Facebook and stuff like that. Like when I share a video in a travel group on Facebook, people always comment on Facebook. They never comment on the video, almost never. Uh, and so that's where the engagement is. But that keeps the thing at the top of the group because people are commenting. So um, have some time to be, you know, in, reply to comments in that first hour. Get them coming back to reply to your, your reply. Everyone's a view, and especially in that first hour. So that's really critical for view velocity. Then we have the first 24 hours, which is important because, again, that's a, that's a key metric that they look at. If you can get yourself a good 100 views in that first 24 hours, that's a pretty good sign to the algorithm. Uh, so I would set that if you wanted like a target for the first 24 hours, I'd say 100 is good. Uh, if that's if that's a struggle, especially for a smaller channel, it's understandable. Setting the target for 100 views within the first week is fine. I did that for my Six Flags video, and that thing ended up getting... Oh, geez, I don't even know. Let's take a quick look. Um, I'm going to come back to this channel, don't worry, because I want to look at the About page. Um, just trying to remember how many uh, views my Six Flags video got, because... God, people hate me for that video, but it got us views. 8,000. Okay, 8,000 views. And my target there was to get 100 views in the first week, and I did. And eventually it got me 8,000 views, so that ain't nothing. Um, and so for that first week, one of the things that's really important is you probably notice when you see videos uh, on your recommended sidebar as you're you know, wading through YouTube uh, or on other things, search your homepage, whatever. Uh, videos sometimes have little boxes underneath them next to the description. And it could say CC, which is closed captioning, or it could say new. It might say 4K, it might say HD. It depends on the interface and when you're looking. Uh, but the new tag is the tag automatically given to videos in the first seven days of their existence. And then it disappears after that first week. And part of that is because the algorithm gives it a fair shot for a week. If you think about broadcast television, they look at the live ratings that occur, people watch it live, but they also began to factor in people who DVR things, who TiVo things, if that's still a word to use. Um, and so now they have live plus seven. And so they look at how many people watched it within a week of it first airing, including people who DVR'd it. You can DVR it and not watch it, but if you DVR it and watch it, that's getting captured in the ratings. And so YouTube has a very similar way of looking at things. And so that first week is absolutely critical, especially because a lot of TV shows, new episode every week, right? Um, so if you went more than a, more than a week, you'd be running up into the next episode and it gets complicated. So that uh, it's been said that the first week on YouTube is the only week on YouTube. It's not the only week, but it's the most important week in a video, generally speaking, unless something causes it to blow up for some reason, a celebrity or the algorithm shifting or a search term or something happening. Um, a trend that you happen to have made a video on two years ago and it gets picked up on the searches, whatever. Uh, so that first week is vitally important. Um, and so if you can always have one video that has that new tag, that helps. Um, I uploaded a new video on my Vacation Impossible account today, and it got like six views in the first hour. And I was like, wow, that was a dud. Uh, it ended up doing kind of okay. It's better now. Um, actually, I'm curious how many views it has now. Uh, 94. That's not bad. For, for the kind of video I made, that's actually pretty decent. Um, but I was looking at it, and it said six views in the first hour. And I was like... And then I reminded myself that having a new video actually helps all your other videos, even if that video isn't doing well. I mean, if that video is doing well, then it's all the better. But uh, I think the algorithm, when displaying your video in search and recommended, uh, it, it, it factors in how recently you had a video on your channel, even if it's not on that subject, because I've noticed that. I've uploaded a video. It didn't do very well. But my watch time and my views across the channel started going up. And so I think it's an algorithmic relationship. Uh, so having always trying to have one video every seven days is kind of ideal if you can pull it off. Let's take a look at the About page. Because uh, I already talked about some of this. 
I just hope you don't get dizzy. I like that. Uh, so you have some hashtags here, but um, the hashtags aren't functional in the description. They are functional in video descriptions, though. You have up to three, and you've got three here. Uh, oh, you do have Twitter and Instagram. Oh, but I guess because you don't have a banner graphic, it's not displaying at the top. Okay. Um, so you get it. That's cool. Uh, maybe I didn't need to rant on that quite as much, but hey, there's a lot of people. Well, I don't know about a lot, but there's some people watching. So hopefully that was useful for some people. But again, the whole description here doesn't tell me anything about what your videos are, are about. And I'm, I'm uh, imagining you're still figuring that out for yourself and that's fine. Um, but the description isn't forever. So you can go in and, and put in what you're thinking it is now. And then if your channel evolves, so too can your description. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I've been talking for a lot. Let's take a look at chat. Oh, you do have a custom, uh, just looking at Goblin here, he has a custom URL, he was inspired by the Green Goblin, has spiked in subs since I've been focusing on live streams. Well, let's hope it works for both of us, buddy. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I would like it if this channel, Small YouTubers Boost, takes off, because I think, uh, I just like the idea of helping people in this, in this space. And I don't like the idea of the secrecy behind YouTube being a disadvantage for people. And so if I can fight that, then let's do it. He just got bigger. Oh, that was when I made the screen bigger. That's funny. I can shrink myself down some more. Maybe. There we go. Uh, understand Spanish. I would like a channel. I don't know what that means. These reviews are really helpful. That's awesome. Love to hear it. I would love to hear opinions of how channel looks and everything, if that's what we're doing here. Never watched one of these before. Yeah, it started off as just, um, God, I started doing this over a year ago, and I was just looking at channel descriptions because I was worried that everyone was ignoring them. Uh, and then slowly it expanded and expanded into channel reviews. Uh, and then also people were asking me, oh, how do you do this or that? Like, how do I change my channel keywords? And I'm like, well, I can just show you right now, now that I've got OBS and I'm sharing my screen. So I started doing tutorials and people also ask questions. And I mean, just doing channel review, channel review, channel review, especially if I keep seeing the same themes, I'm, I mean, it, I'm worried it gets boring for people watching uh, because if I just keep saying the same thing over and over again, you're like, we've heard this before, Ray, come on, get me, give me something new. Uh, and so it's kind of grown to just talking about all sorts of YouTube stuff. And I'm hoping that there's information and inspiration would be great. If I can, like in, in past live streams, I've, I've stumbled across a channel, like there was a school teacher's channel. I, I came across a couple live streams ago and I was just really excited because I had all these ideas. Like I wish... I could make, I wish I could have a hundred channels myself. I'd love to be a gamer. I'd love to be a motivational speaker. I'd love to be, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial guy. I'd love to do tons of stuff, but you know, you only got the one life and 24 hours in a day. But if, but if I'm able to inspire an idea for the toy reviewer to do something right before Christmas or whatever, uh, I don't know. It's like I get to, for a, a few moments, pretend that I'm in that niche and I get to have a little fun and play with it. So, uh, I like that. I can count to 19 in Mandarin. Does that count? I used to be able to count to 10 in both Mandarin and Cantonese because I worked at a performing arts theater that had tons of uh, performances from them. And I was an usher and I was bored out of my mind. So I was like, is R5? She is... And then I eventually figured it out uh, and I knew for a couple of years and then I forgot. <laughs> She's the person that remembers it. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't let me tag... I might have left Ray's group because it's toxic, but that didn't stop me from finding you. All right. I mean, it's 64,000 people. There's going to be good and bad people in there. It's all about uh, as much free speech as we can tolerate uh, within the four rules. If it breaks any of the four rules, then we take action. If it doesn't, we just let it be. Well, if there's somebody that you don't like that's not a mod, you can block them. Um, but also, I mean, having a variety of opinions is not a bad thing, in my opinion, because then you get a lot of perspectives. Uh, if you get her early, um, you get reviewing comments. Yeah. So the way that these live streams work is I go chronologically through chat and then I offer people either a channel review, a uh, tutorial or a question or I don't know, whatever, whatever else they might want. And I try to try to help out where I can. Let's see who's next. All the same people showing up. Whitest Danny. That's an, oh, I hope you were joking about that sub trade. <sighs> So, folks, <laughs> here's why sub for sub is the number one rule in small YouTubers boost. You try it, you get banned. 
uh, and pretty much banned for life. What I try to do every now and then in the group, maybe like around New Year's, I'm feeling magnanimous, I'll go through our banned list and I'll unban people depending on the reasons they were banned for. I never do it for sub for sub. If you're doing sub for sub, you're going to kill your channel and other people's channels. And you may have heard like, oh, you'll get dead subs. It's not even about that. I don't even care about that. Almost every sub's a dead sub the way that YouTube doesn't show your videos to subs anymore. So that doesn't, like when I was desperate for a thousand subs, I would have taken a thousand dead subs. I didn't care. That's not what this is about. What this is about uh, is if you do sub for sub, you're violating YouTube's terms of service. And if they catch you, they will shut your channel down. When they shut your channel down, they will tell you, but you have no recourse. And it is just done. Like, no notice, no warning. They just told you they did it already. That's how it goes. How do I know this? The dozens, if not hundreds of people who've come into the Small YouTubers Boost Facebook group and said, I just lost my channel. And, uh, you know, often they're like, I did nothing wrong. And they were like, send us a screenshot of the notification. It's like, the notification says you did sub for sub. Well, yeah, I did that. It was like, well, that was wrong. Uh, so, you know, in um, it's our rule number one. We ban for it because we are here to help people be successful. Sub for sub gets your channel shut down. That is the opposite of success. It is our enemy, as far as I'm concerned. Not to overstate it or anything. But um, that's sort of in, in a, 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 a nutshell what that's all about. But part of the thing is, is maybe you don't believe me. That's fine. If you go to the Small YouTubers Boost Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Small YouTubers Boost, you check on the announcements, the pinned post with the rules, and check the comments. I believe it's the first two comments show you the part of their terms of service why sub for sub and selling or buying channels will cost you your channel and get it shut down. So don't take my word for it. <laughs> Reading Rainbow fans out there. Um, don't take my word for it. Go read it yourself. But that is the thing. We're not here to make you fail. We're not here to get you to lose your channel. We're here to do the exact opposite of that. But anyways, there was a laughing emoji after that white uh, Danny. So I hope you were joking about that. Um, and uh, if you're still here, do you have a question or um, uh, you want a tutorial or something? Uh, anything I can do for you that is not sub for sub? Stacy wants a channel review. Uh, we'll see if we get to you. Um, I feel like I'm in bonus time now, but um, uh, doesn't no sign of stopping. So I'll keep going as long as I can uh, until life kind of gets in the way and says, you know. Uh, looks like White is Danny left. And I'm kind of okay with that. <laughs> um, unless he was joking. And that's one of the things. Like, don't joke about sub for sub. Because, like, YouTube's trying to find people who are doing that. Like, I didn't even want to mention it in this live stream. But I kind of had to address that issue in chat that was coming up. Um, because, like, I... Like... Even saying no sub for sub, that means the word sub for sub is there. And I'm like, I'm worried that somebody's going to see it and like not read the whole thing, not get the context, not look at it, not look at it holistically and not realize it's a joke. So like, honestly, I don't even, I wouldn't even joke about that because like it, the we're, we've got 10 moderators and this one admin running a group of 64,000 people. And you can talk about, maybe we should have more moderators. Um, but when we have too many, if two moderators are working on the same issue at the same time, it generates errors that we can't clear for months on the back end. So that's why we were careful about not having too many moderators. But, um, the, uh, uh, the, and so there's, but there's a challenge there. And so we want to review posts and I want to give post approval to as many people as I can, because, uh, it makes it easier for me, and then the group can kind of maintain itself without me, uh, you know, if I'm sick or something. But um, but I'm going through quickly, because I know there's tons of people and tons of requests. And so I'm just scanning. When I'm scanning posts, I'm looking for uh, two words that describe a video or a channel. And as soon as I find them, I like, then I just scan to make sure they're not doing sub for sub, and then I click approve. And if it's really well written, I grant pre-approval. That's how that works. Um... And so, but you're, I'm just scanning for the, for if I see sub for sub, I zero in on it like a laser beam uh, and not in a good mood. <laughs> so if you're saying don't, I don't do sub for sub, it, I have to take that extra second. And if I'm in a rush, if I'm, if, if I'm on a train or a bus or a plane or something and there's a bump and I accidentally hit delete, you know, because my finger was hovering over it because I'm like, uh oh, sub for sub, got to ban this person. Um, so, like, don't even joke about it. Like, let's not worry. Like the robot army of YouTube might not understand the human flawed moderators and admins might not catch that it's a joke. Sarcasm does not translate. If there's a sarcasm or emoji or font, it needs to happen yesterday. <laughs> but as I, as I understand it, there isn't one currently. So, um, yeah, my recommendation, don't joke about that kind of thing. <laughs> and a lot of same people here in chat. Mr. TPG My. 
you say hello uh, did you want channel review do you got a question a tutorial can i get a channel review all right we're doing it good old-fashioned channel review Okay, uh, TubeBuddy gives your channel name as a search term, a 63, uh, and the rates that is good. Um, this doesn't look English. This could be a problem for me. I'm not sure uh, how helpful I'm going to be able to be if I can't read what's there. I apologize for that. Um, let's see what I can do with a language barrier. You've got a channel trailer, which is a good thing. 15 seconds long. Not bad. I bet your attention on that. It's a great percentage. You've got consistency of uh, a lot of your thumbnails. They look pretty consistent, so that's a good thing. We've got popular uploads and episodes. Um, episodes is a little vague. Uh, you might also want to have a just uploads. Um, so there's like your five most recent videos would appear. That would flush out your channel design a bit. Um, you have a subscribe button in your social links, which I would recommend against. You've got a subscribe button right down here. Having two that close to each other, I don't think helps you. Um, but you've got Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, which is good. Uh, let's see, Twitter. It's Mr. TPG. Okay, that's, that's fine. It's the real Mr. TPG. That's fine. It's Mr. P TPG. So there's some consistent uh, C of usernames there. That's pretty good. Why are you talking so much? Anyways, <laughs> 169 subscribers, popular channels. Uh, I would recommend activating the box here that allows you to refer people to other specific channels. Don't worry about it hurting your channel. If someone goes to another channel through your channel and stays on that channel for two hours, that helps your channel because of something called session watch time. So you can have watch time, how long somebody watches one of your videos, but session watch time is how long they stay on the platform of YouTube. And so if your video is the gateway you know, maybe somebody clicks a Facebook link to come to your video. They watch your video and then they go and watch some other stuff for the next two or three hours. YouTube loves you for that because they think you went out and you got them a new audience member and you and, and then somehow kept them on the platform, even if it wasn't watching your stuff for hours. And so that helps. And that will actually algorithmically improve how it treats your video. Because it says, wow, this video is a gateway to keeping people on our platform for two or three hours. Let's get more people to watch it. You know, uh, alternatively, let's say that you're you're really into selling something. And so you've got it so that, you know, you've got enough subscribers and settings and everything that you can have like an info card that links people to a website to go buy something. Or you've got a link in the description to go off of the platform. Um, then that kind of cuts the session watch time uh, short. And YouTube's like, geez, this person's making people leave. I don't know, do we really want to, would you want to promote people to leave? It's like, I worked in a department store. I worked in Sears for like three or four years. Um, I was helping out a friend. It's a long story. Um, but they had this big deal about, it was a, it was an anchor store. So it was attached to an underground mall. And so there was a big deal about which direction the escalators went in. So if the escalator going down pointed you to the mall, people would take the escalator down and walk straight out of the mall. And so the foot traffic would leave. It was like leaking. So they went to some extent of expense to reverse it so that the escalator going down pointed into the back of the store and they had to walk around to get to the mall. But as they're walking around, they're exposed to all these different products. Oh, I do need underwear. Oh, I do need a dress shirt. Hey, that suit is nice. And I don't know if it was worth it. The store ended up closing, so whatever. Um, maybe it was helpful for a time. But uh, it's a similar thing. It's a, this is a business. YouTube is a business. They want to keep people in their business. So um, that that's that. Uh, but if you want to take my session watch time, go click on the TubeBuddy link. <laughs> it's an affiliate link, so I get a little something if you happen to get the paid version. Not sponsored. Um, so you got some playlists here. Uh, again, a playlist that indicates by title the subject matter. Like you do, it's interesting because you do have some English in your titles and some of the graphics and things. So, like here, why Malaysians are divided over DS uh, return to politics. So it sounds like you talk about politics. If you only talk about politics, you can make that more clear. Um, if you sometimes talk about politics, then maybe a playlist that's just politics or Malaysian politics or whatever it is. That could help with search and discovery. It's also nice to organize your channel that way so people can navigate and find the content that they're interested in and looking for more efficiently. I bet I can't do much with the about page. 
Oh wait, it looks like there's some English underneath. My name is TPG, and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. In this channel, I'll be expressing my opinions on viral issues, which happens in Malaysia. You know, the word viral is really misunderstood these days, I think. Um, and, and meme as well. Uh, if you ask a bunch of people what meme means, you'll find two definitions. One is a graphic with impact font. <laughs> Uh, and other people will be something like, oh, it's something that's funny. And other people will be in, uh, so maybe three definitions. And the third one's actually accurate. A uh, meme is just something that has, um, gone viral, basically. Uh, is, is the proper dictionary definition if you were to look it up. And so viral things, I'm wondering if, I mean, virus is because it's so popular, it spreads like a virus, it's self-sustaining. It's not like, I've had some things go semi-viral. And what, how do I describe semi-viral is where other people start sharing it without any prompting from me. I've had a couple of videos here and there. Like, I think my helicopter rescue video, my migrants being rescued by a cruise ship video, um, my how to dress for Alaska video. I've had a couple that I've, I've noticed out there. Uh, and more recently, using some TubeBuddy tools on videos, you can actually see when it's being shared on Twitter and Reddit, which is kind of cool. It's, that's called Videolytics. I have a tutorial video here on this channel that'll show you all about that. Um, but it's, uh, you know, that's sort of what viral is. And so viral issues, which happens in Malaysia, is kind of weird. Because I think generally when we're talking viral in the context of the internet, it's more global than that. I think maybe the word you're looking for is trending. Um, because that's sort of what everyone's kind of talking about. Because I don't know that an issue goes viral necessarily. People don't share issues. Like videos go viral. Jokes go viral. Um, so I think maybe trending is the word you're looking for there. Uh, or current events, possibly. Or important issues. I don't know. Viral just doesn't strike me quite right. Unless you're talking about like virus diseases that are <laughs> happening in Malaysia, which I don't think is what you're here for. Um, most of you guys would be asking, who the hell are you to give opinions? Well, my reply is, I'm just an ordinary Malaysian. This channel is not inclined to any political party. Do not forget to subscribe. So this is interesting. I'm guessing English isn't your first language, and that's fine. Hopefully some of what I'm saying is helpful in some way. Um, so again, thank you for visiting my channel in this channel. Generally speaking, I would remove that. Uh, nobody searches for those terms, and it doesn't really add value. Uh, it's great to say those things, but to type them out, I think people just scan right past it. That could just be me. Uh, again, whenever the word I is by itself, uh, or the letter I is by itself serving as a word, it should be capitalized. So I will be expressing capital I. Uh, my opinions on viral issues. Um, yeah, the inter yeah. who the hell are you to give my opinions? I'm just an ordinary Malaysian. It's a little adversarial, I guess. Maybe saying something like, um, uh, I, I, I'm giving you... Um, the opinions of the day from the viewpoint of an ordinary Malaysian. Something like that. Put, spin it a little bit more positive. I mean, I kind of I kind of like the who the hell are you question. And it's a little dynamic. It's kind of interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because also, it was most of you guys would be asking who the hell are you. That's not what I thought. When I was reading that, I was like, most of you guys will be asking, what's the channel about? <laughs> um, was what I was thinking at the time. Uh, not who, who are you to give your opinions. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I think that it's generally accepted on the internet these days is that, you know, everybody gives their opinions. You don't necessarily have to justify it. Um, you might have haters in the comments, but don't tailor your channel description for the haters. Don't do it. You chew the haters up and use them for fuel. That's what you do. They are interactions. They are views and watch time and comments. And so they're lovely for those things. But don't let them totally, like... If you feel like you're fighting a defensive action against haters, then maybe you need to listen to them a little less. Just one guy's opinion. Channelytics, the TubeBuddy browser plugin extension bonus here. So you've got some channel tags. They look like long tail tags. Don't know what the heck they're saying, but there's some consistency there. So that's good. Um, yeah, you're on the social media platforms. Uh, doesn't look like you're a TubeBuddy user. Highly recommend TubeBuddy. I can say that to people of all languages. Um, bu 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 bu. Okay, you've had a bit of a, a, a view explosion just like yesterday. No, two days ago. Because, right, these these numbers are always delayed uh, 48 hours. So you had a bit of a view explosion uh, on January 24th. Let's see what's that all about. That was views. Is there a corresponding subscriber bonus? ish yeah you've had a little bit of subscriber growth lately i'm thinking you put out some videos lately oh that's interesting 
So the last video you put out was January 18th. So you know you you got yeah the fourth the tenth, you know your video frequency is not bad. Um, so that's fine. But what's interesting is you had a view explosion on the 24th, but no corresponding increase in videos. That tells me that one of two things happened. You either shared it very effectively or the algorithm favored you for whatever reason. So what I would do if I were you is I would think back to the 24th, which was Thursday. What were you doing to promote your channel on Thursday? Uh, were you commenting on other channels? Were you sharing it in social media things? Did you share it in a Facebook group or something? What did you do? Maybe go look at your traffic sources and narrow it down to just that day. Um, and then ask yourself, how can I double down on that? Because like, here's an example. I had, um, I was looking at my traffic sources a while back and I was trying to understand where I was getting traffic for my how to dress for Alaska video on Vacation Impossible. And I noticed that there was a website I'd never heard of before that was giving me a little bit of traffic, three or four views in a month or something. Not a lot, but I was curious, what's going on here? Uh, so I, I went to that website to see what it was, and it was a message board. It was a French traveling message board. So I know a little bit of French, but it's rough. Uh, so what I did is I got Google Translate up, and I went to that message board, created an account for myself, um, and you know was trying to translate, trying to figure out the rules and how to behave on the message board. And what I ended up doing was um, it had gotten me some views for How to Dress for Alaska, which is an English video. I'm speaking in English with English subtitles. Uh, maybe they translated the subtitles, I don't know, because it was captioning on YouTube. But I thought to myself, okay, they're interested in Alaska. I have a video that is a time lapse of Alaska shot from um, the ocean view, uh, sort of like a porthole in, a, in a, a cruise ship cabin. And it just has some music. There's no spoken word. So that could appeal to anyone regardless. So what I did is I went in and using Google Translate, I tried to find the best part of the, the forum that would be an appropriate place to share that. And then I basically went in and kind of crafted something in, in French and checked with Google Translate saying like, hey, check out this time lapse that shows you what Alaska looks like from uh, the inside of a cruise ship. And then I shared the video and then I got more views and traffic and some people were commenting and had nice things to say. Uh, and so that's a way, an example, a small one, didn't give me tons of views, but like, again, they're lottery tickets. You never know when they're going to pay off. They're always drawing new numbers. So um, that got me a little bit more traffic, but that, that came out of looking into the traffic sources uh, and seeing because maybe you're getting some traffic from something that in a viral way or some organic way you know, they, they found you as someone shared you or something. And w maybe that's an audience you could engage with. Maybe there's similar content you make that could help them, that could answer their questions or entertain them or make them laugh or whatever you're trying to do. So um, it's good to look at your traffic sources is, uh, is sort of uh, my advice there for that particular day. Uh, maybe you got TubeBuddy, went in and, and, and improved your meta tags. If that's the case, cool. If you only did that for a couple of videos, maybe do it for more. Uh, whatever it was you did on the 24th, uh, if you can figure that out, that might give you a sign of potential growth area. All right, let's see what's going on with chat. Just getting caught up here. Right, not small. Oh, <laughs> I made the box small. Right. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, my post for the my post for this live stream just got approved in a in a group that I'm in, a YouTube group that I'm in on Facebook that I'm not a mod of. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, maybe those people will actually catch this. Um, when somebody ordered something and they're canceling it, doesn't comment order. Oh, I don't know. Ba, 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 ba send it to him anyways are you supporting pewdiepie no sorry i'm not supporting t-series either if that helps i just don't care uh, i mean i care a little bit in the sense that whoever's at the top the kind of heavy is the head that wears the crown so like if something happens with youtube they'll often go there like in a year ago when the new monetization rules were brought in i was interviewed by a reporter taylor um with the Daily Beast, and so I was quoted in their article, and also an, a reporter here, uh, David Friend, in, in Canada, interviewed me for the Canadian press and the, about the rules, and that was picked up in the digital version of newspapers from coast to coast to coast across Canada, and that was kind of cool. 
Uh, he even embedded one of my videos, Costa Maya. Uh, it got me a few views, not a lot, maybe a hundred. Uh, but still, it was cool. Um, and then when there was the shooting at YouTube, uh, Taylor contacted me from Daily Beast again for some comment from the small YouTuber perspective. And I, I gave some comments. And I don't like the thought that PewDiePie is the guy whose phone is going to ring the next time something like that happens. I don't like the idea of him speaking for all of us just because he's the top. Uh, and T-Series, as I understand it, is a collection of music videos. Um, so it's not really a content creator. It's an aggregate. Like, I, I mean, you could charitably, and I don't know a lot about it, but it sounds like you could charitably call it a curator of content. Um, but it's kind of like, um, back in the day, there was like E-Bombs World, where basically they just stole content from like the oatmeal and reposted it without credit. Uh, I'm not, I don't know that that's what they're doing necessarily, but it's just an aggregator. It's like saying that like, oh, the YouTube category music is the most subscribed to channel ever. Well, it's a category. It's not really... There's not a person behind it. So um, in that sense, I'm not that fond of it because PewDiePie has done some things and I don't watch his channel. I don't know much about him, but he ends up getting in the news in ways that seems to hurt YouTubers as a brand uh, and, and for things that on the surface from the articles I've read, uh, I don't necessarily agree with personally. So I have, uh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess, yeah, if, if, T-Series takes over, uh, then PewDiePie will no longer be necessarily the the top YouTuber, but he'd be the top individual still. So I still think he'd get that limelight. And I just don't like him representing us personally. I, I don't know that there's a, like, you know, there's other people out there that, that could do a better job, but they're probably not competitive at that level. Um, and it's a shame because that's just the way that they're looked at by by a flawed culture, media, society, whatever you want to call it. But they, they look for... Um, a microcosm, a personification of something as complicated as YouTube. And YouTube is more, far more complicated than just T-Series or just PewDiePie. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know. He doesn't strike me as a nuanced speaker of issues that are important to all of us. I wonder who Gordon Ramsay would support. I don't know. <laughs> because of the by-election. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, there was a by-election in Malaysia, and you had a video on that subject. Okay. Can you trigger more by-elections? I'm kidding. I know you can't. <laughs> but uh, that's interesting. That is, that is interesting. Uh, let's see. Who's who's next uh, in uh, in our little game here? Getting a little tired, but I'm, um, you know, soldiering on. Maybe it'll just slow me down a little. Ted. That's a, like, that is your full name? How'd you get that? It was very entertaining. You're the best streamer. Thank you very much. I said thank you earlier, but thank you again because that's just a massive compliment. Uh, Ted, are you still around? Do you want a channel review? Do you want me to look at a, like video tags or a tutorial? You got a question? This is weird. Sometimes there's a time index on posts in chat, and sometimes there aren't. Y'all pretending to burn witches? <laughs> Chat? That's funny. I just died inside. I hope that wasn't me. Are people really upset that I'm not like a huge PewDiePie or T-Series fan? I like Pat Contry. He's kind of my favorite YouTuber, honestly. And I'm way behind on his podcast. I save him up and I listen to him on planes and on cruises and trains and things. Uh, I, really, I really like him. Um... Oh, and Roberto Blake. I love Roberto Blake, too, uh, in terms of somebody who supports creators. That guy's awesome. I, I I watch his videos on subjects I don't care about. I don't care about becoming a freelancer. I don't care about, like, certain things. But I like his positivity. I like his pacing. He's got a calm, calming voice and stuff like that. Uh, and, and I just find it's... Um, even when he's ranting, I find it really motivational. It makes me want to like get up and yeah, I'm gonna go fix those tags on that video, and I'm gonna go go help somebody. I'm gonna like I don't know. It amps me up. I like it. Uh, okay, so I don't think Ted's here anymore. How about WarioCraft? I like your logo. That's really solid. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly because of the unlaut over the a. <laughs> right, you're the one asking about uh, collabs. I'd like to see Asia after I backpack across Europe. Europe is lovely. What I'd recommend is end in London if you can. I call London the dessert of Europe. And so it's like a nice little dessert at the end of your journey. Oh, it looks like uh, this live stream got approved in another Facebook group. 
hello, people who don't normally catch this live. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, Mario, are you Malaysian? I guess by the flag. You see, I, I, yeah, I, know, I guess that's the Malaysian flag. I didn't, I didn't know. Have you been to Abbotsford? Yes, I haven't flown out of Abbotsford. Um, my friend Calvin went there to buy a guitar once. They, I, I think they had a really good guitar shop. Good prices. Ray's been exposed. For what? No, <laughs> uh, oh, your friends with Disney in real life. That's cool. My name. Did I reveal my name? Oh, the fact that that's my first name? Yeah, my first name is not that big of a secret. Although it's so funny because on the Mario Marathon, it was like a... Uh, it was a... Um, Sort of a game one time. It's like Mario Marathon 4, I think. People were like trying to guess my name because they know me only as Cowman. Uh, and then when I got invited to actually go, everyone was calling me Cowman the whole time. And it felt like the most normal thing in the world because that's how the Mario Marathon guys know me. Um, and then it was the day after the first marathon I was a part of. I had an extra day in Indianapolis. They were driving me around, showing me town. They were very lovely. Great tour guides. Nice, nice guys. And at one point, Brian turns to me. He's just like, is it weird that I call you Cowman? Like... It's strange that we don't get looks from people in purse in like restaurants when I just turn to you and be like, "Hey, cowman," blah blah blah. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, honestly, that's totally fine. It's totally normal. He's like, "I'm sorry, what's your real name again?" <laughs> I was like, "You forgot the game from like Mario Marathon 4? It's Ray. He's like, "Right, right, Ray." And I'm like, "Wow, that sounds really weird when you say that. <laughs> it didn't feel right. It was the strangest thing." Uh interesting advice just trying to see if wario would like any specific anything specific assuming wario that you're still here i may have may have uh, missed you <laughs> raised beautifully bald wow that is that is nice thank you if you want there is a video on vacation impossible of the first time i shaved my head it was a challenge video before challenge videos were really a thing um Okay. Anyways, it looks like uh, looks like Ted and Wario might not be here anymore. Uh, so let's see. Who else we got kicking around? Stacy Gardner, are you still here? Have I reviewed your channel before? Your name sounds a little familiar. Kind of looks like a picture of you. Review. I would like a channel review. Cool. All right, let's do it. Oh, no, that's, like, just a dude. I, <laughs> when it was shrunk down, it was, like, Ryu from Street Fighter. Um, oh, I guess there was a model on Deal or No Deal named <laughs> Stacy Gardner. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Um, the top ten most expensive lawyers in the world. Deal or No Deal model. So there's some challenge there uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, 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 branding, uh, competition of, like, you know, locking down that brand. Um, but the channel, the channel before you is here. I upload my Let's Plays and do live streams. I also do unboxing videos and have other plans on. See, and that's interesting because it doesn't look to me like your picture lines up with what you're saying your channel is about. Uh, unless maybe you play some Street Fighter 2 or something. But I was expecting like a, a martial arts channel or something. Maybe a fitness channel uh, or a cosplay channel, something. Um, so anyways, the channel before you is here I upload my. Cut all that. I'm just going to be brutal. <laughs> it's faster. Um, and just say let's plays in live streams. I also do unboxing videos and go from there. Um, cut the fat because you want it just as quickly as possible because you get so few characters on the search results here. Just hit them. Hit them hard <laughs> with the whole martial arts metaphor there. Okay. Uh, 338 videos. That is quite the back catalog, my friend. Uh, and 176 subscribers. Ratios. Uh, not, not great. But numbers don't necessarily tell the whole story. So your banner image is something that's out of focus. I assume artistically, potentially. Uh, it looks to me like in the foreground is what might be a mic stand or the head of a guitar uh, or something with a cable coming off of it, and it looks like it's in traffic. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. It doesn't communicate information to me. Um, it doesn't look bad, but it's not... A, I could see this again tomorrow and not associate it with your channel. It's kind of a generic image, uh, the way it displays here. So I would consider putting something on it or getting a different image that actually reflects the subject of what your channel is about. 
Newcadia.com. Well, it looks like something with an affiliate link, like for developers? Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, and you got some Google Plus action there. Facebook, Loyal Dark Ninja. If you go by Loyal Dark Ninja... That's interesting. There's a lot of names going on here, I'm noticing. So, when I go to your channel, it gives me slash user slash anime watcher 1001. The display name is Stacy Gardner. On Facebook, there's Dark Loyal Dark Ninja. So, there's a lot of different names going around here. Um, but it's user. Let me see if I cut out user. Is that also your channel? Do you have a custom channel URL? Is it already that? Yes, it is. Okay, so you're kind of locked into that. Uh, I don't think you're able to change it. Uh, I'm not entirely certain. I've only changed mine once when I went from it being Cowman to Vacation Impossible. Uh, and that was long before I hit 100 subscribers because it took me forever. Um, Elemental King 15 on Twitch. Stace Dog 16 on Twitter. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of inconsistency there. I mean, if you can brand yourself with one name and try to use that as consistently as possible. Now, if you've grown substantial followings on platforms, uh, like the fellow earlier, uh, Goblin, then uh, it might not be worth it to shift gears and start over. But if you don't have a huge following, something that's a little bit more consistently on brand so we know when it's you um, might be a good idea. Uh, preview of things to come. A small video of my upcoming videos. Um, let's see here. Both things my subscribers and viewers come up with and projects that my friends and I come up with. And again, capitalize the I uh, for I come up with. It's just slightly more professional. Uh, so you got uploads. Play Mega Man X. That's cool. Uh, what do you play on? Do you, uh, it looks like it's in a box. But that could be something you did. Um, or is that like in one of those collections discs or something? I don't know. Um, curious what you're playing it on. Uh, Mega Man 4. With, uh, was it, uh, Dr. Kossick, right? He was the bad guy in Mega Man 4? Uh, that game was pretty good. It was a little hard, but I was never super great at Mega Man. Ooh. Those are good stuff. Videos that I wanted to be on a playlist. Have I looked at your channel before? This Who's Line stuff looks really familiar. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a bunch of stuff that's not yours. But you're not, you didn't upload it. It's like you're you're showing other channels. Which is interesting because you don't recommend other channels. So that's a little inconsistent. I would recommend recommending channels in the box you can uh, activate above popular uploads. Um, and then get rid of the playlists uh, that's populated with content that isn't yours. Uh, that's hosted on other channels would be my advice. Unless people come to you as a curator for these things. But, I mean, what I'm seeing here is your uploads look to be all about gaming... I think. Yeah. And so having music videos and whose line is it anyways, it's not consistent content or consistent brand. Don't get me wrong. I love whose line. Uh, I was captain of an improv team for two years and I was on it for four. Like I love improv. I love going down to Granville Island here in Vancouver and watching improv. Um, I've performed on Granville Island uh, doing improv at uh, provincial quarterfinals. But it's just, I mean, there's eclectic and then there's going off brand. So... Yeah. Also, like, your favorite videos, the F and the V are not capitalized, so that doesn't look necessarily super professional. And just some thoughts there. Um, let's take a look at your playlists. Well, it's interesting, because you got a lot of playlists here. you got, like, Mega Man X, and you got Unboxing. Those don't have a lot of videos, but you've got, like, Sonic the Hedgehog's got six, Mega Man 3's got 16... Um, Twitch streams. Was that Transformers? That's um. Is that that's probably Devastation? I got that on the PS3. That was like that was a great game. Uh, that was an awesome, awesome game. So what I would suggest is remove the two playlists that are full of things that are hosted on other channels and replace them with a couple of your more successful um playlists that you have about your content. Make sure they have at least five videos so that they fill up the space and maybe go for the things that are popular. Um, just, you know, build on your strengths. I'm just looking at your liked videos here. I would personally make your liked videos private. Um, that's just what I do. Um, because I might like things that aren't necessarily on brand. Um, but it's interesting. It looks like, uh, Adam Conover did an Adam's Ruin, Ruins Everything for, uh, 
for female gamers or something, I'd watch that. I like Adam Ruins Everything. I like College Humor. Uh, okay, let's check the About page. Yeah, I mean, there could be more things that are kind of keyword friendly in there. But I think I already talked about your description a fair bit. Looking at Channelytics. I feel like I'm running out of steam. This might be my last channel review for the night. I've gotten quite a few in, so and some people have been waiting a while. Uh, so I'm glad I was able to get catch people like Goblin and other people who have been, uh, you know, both patient and not so patient. Um, we've probably had, uh, you know, maybe not great luck catching me live, but I'm feeling a little tired. It's been nearly two hours, so I can probably go for about the two-hour thing and call it like I gave you a movie. I think that's more than fair. So your channel tags, um, unboxing, let's play. Elemental King Gaming. So I'm guessing you've gone through a few different changes in your channel. Um, but, you know, there's Mega Man games. So, like, Mega Man should be probably in your channel tag somewhere, uh, at, the, at, the, at the least. So I would look at bulking that up a little bit. Subscriber growth has been relatively constant. That's not bad. View growth steady. Pretty consistent uploads. Yeah, I mean, I don't have huge recommendation there. Your do you have end screens? Um, your subscriber count to your video count. There's a disconnect there, which is a little strange for me. Um, although I don't know. I mean, I had a similar disconnect for quite a while myself. But I'm wondering if you're getting all the opportunities that you could for people to subscribe. Uh, what I'm talking about is end screens on your videos. So if you don't have this, and I'm speaking to every, anyone watching, not just uh, Stacy, but um, an end screen is what appears in the last like 20 odd seconds of a video. And it's interactive uh, because you can have, uh, you know, a, a button to subscribe to the channel, other videos or playlists or things that they could go watch. So um, as much as possible, I recommend, and so does TubeBuddy, having an end card on all of your videos. Uh, or at least as much as possible where, where it makes sense and that the stuff wouldn't cover up important content. And then to plan for end cards in the future by putting up something in the last 20 odd seconds, 15 seconds of your future videos where you can put those interactive pieces on it. Uh, you can also have a watermark uh, which is under your channel settings under branding where it's like a semi-transparent thing that can appear at a certain point in all your videos i think i have mine set to like at the 30 second mark it appears so they can click on that to subscribe then click on end cards to subscribe or watch more of your content uh, i recommend doing both of those things if you're not already and that might help with your subscriber situation um if you don't have like a good thing for end cards like a template uh, what I would recommend is if you do get TubeBuddy, and even if you just get their cheapest paid version, uh, and go to the Small YouTubers Boost group, facebook.com slash group slash Small YouTubers Boost, and if you go there into the announcement section, there's a code that'll save you 20%. But if you get even the cheapest version, you get access to tons of tools. It's going to take me a lifetime to make videos just capturing how to use all their tools. But one of the things you get is Roberto Blake's YouTube Starter Kit Sample Pack. It's a mouthful, but what it includes is a bunch of Photoshop downloads, uh, and I think also like PNGs and stuff. I'm not sure. They're, I think there's a couple different formats, um, and so it's like it's got like five end cards, five thumbnails, different things. I think at least, uh, and so you can use that, and you can use it just straight up, or you could use it and modify it, or use it as a template to create your own. I used it as a template to create my own. So what I did is I got one of Roberto Blake's uh, uh, end screens and I opened it up in Photoshop and I set it to 50% transparency so I could still see it while I was working on other layers of the image. What I did is I had this really, uh, what I think is a really nice picture of the ocean uh, with a little bit of sunlight uh, and uh, I had taken it with my DSLR and so I used that as the background image and then I put my channel logo sort of in the middle lining it up with the size according to the template and then I was using that for Vacation Impossible as its end screen. And a little bit later, I actually wrote the word subscribe under where that logo is. And so that's now built into the end screen as well. And for this channel, Small YouTubers Boost, I created something similar based on a banner on the banner for our Facebook group. So it says Small YouTubers Boost in the top corner. It's got that graphic of the line going up, like the graph increasing and the arrow pointing up. Uh, and then I'm able to put the end card elements on top of that. Uh, and I think that might be something that might help your subscriber growth is having those clickables if you don't already. 
Um, and the thing is, you do have a substantial back catalog. Uh, and another great thing with TubeBuddy is uh, with I think I think you need the paid version to do this, um, but you can bulk update. So you could add the same info card or the same end screen template or whatever to all your videos if you've got that option. So you know, uh, link in the description. Uh, to, to TubeBuddy where you can go and you can get that and uh, remember to get the discount code uh, if you decide to happen to get the paid version but that's something that I would highly recommend that you do so just wrapping this up in the next 10 minutes or so, 10-15 minutes, I'm just going to see what's happening in chat hopefully this has been useful for people uh, Amanda, you're on Tumblr, well of course as a writer you've got to be on Tumblr uh, let's see here Have you got the bell icon check? Yeah, that's the thing. If you guys want to be, um, you know, in one of these live streams where I review your channel, answer your question, show you a tutorial, whatever, uh, getting here early is the way to do it for now. I just, it's the simplest, fairest way I could think of. Uh, until I get like super chat enabled on this channel or something else, I can't think of any other way that like, gives people an order to do it fairly. Um, because otherwise, what am I going to do? Just pick people who've got cool names or something, or say nice things about me? I don't know. That doesn't seem fair. Uh, Mr. TPG, my appreciated the review. Glad to hear it. That's awesome. I tagged you in the comments. It works now. Cool. I will check that out at some point. How many more views are you doing? This, uh, yeah, this is probably it. I was at an anime convention. Trailer's out of date. Fair enough. Uh, oh, Wario. You'll get yours in the next. The growth is fast. I'm just under 200 and I've been on YouTube since 2015, although I haven't uploaded anything onto my main channel for over a year. Well, I mean, that's it. The biggest thing you can do to help a channel is is uploads. Wario, you're still here. Uh, I mean, I got a little juice left. You want me to take a quick look at your channel? I feel bad your name came up and you weren't around. I could have just done it. <laughs> Let's see. Honestly, I'm just kind of curious about your channel because, you know, I'm a bit of a retro kid. You're in Vancouver! <laughs> hey, Wario! How you doing? I'm in Vancouver, too. That's cool. I love Nintendo, Minecraft, and traveling. You know, funny, quick story. Um, I forget how it happened, but I was invited to a meetup of local, like, gamers here in Vancouver a couple years ago. Um don't remember when it was exactly we met up at metro town at the at the food court and uh everyone brought their 3ds's and they were talking and stuff and um how did i get invited to that i don't remember i think i was in a i'm in an amiibo hunters vancouver group maybe that was it anyways it was weird they were really nice people we chatted for a bit i was clearly the oldest guy there uh by a, a wide margin and so anyways i you know i said hey guys you know this was i was i was like cow yeah, man if you street past me catch you later whatever um and they had given me a card that included their facebook group but it didn't have a custom url so it's like a whole bunch of numbers so i went in i plugged it in i found it and i requested to be added to the group and they never approved me <laughs> maybe they didn't like me i don't know i don't know how the local gaming community feels about old ray <laughs> um but that's fine um is anybody still here chat is almost like frozen oh somebody had to do the stacy's mom joke yeah oh well, that was coming I guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I live in Vancouver, Canada. I uh, love Nintendo, Minecraft, and traveling. Like, comment, and subscribe to Wario Toad 32. But your Wario Craft, not Wario Toad 32. I mean, you did say that this was a little out of date, so fair enough. Search I Hate Mondays. Merry Christmas. Mario Kart multiplayer. Mario Kart 7 multiplayer, so it's on 3DS. Yeah, that's got to be hard to capture. I sympathize there. I love your logo, though. Your logo is cool. Adventures of Super Mario 3 into multi-language. It's a cool idea. The banner, uh, yeah. It's a little too zoomed in at this resolution. Uh, so it looks a little fuzzy, and you can't quite make out what's going on. It looks like something's getting caught up, uh, you know, cut off at the top. So I would zoom out or maybe get a new banner. Uh, you got Google Plus there, which is kind of mandatory. But if you have, like... Uh, if you have a Twitch or you have Twitter or Instagram, whatever, adding social links on your about page, we'll add the icons up there. It's a good idea. Uh, let's see here. Oh, intro video. So I guess that's you. Uh, I don't think I've ever met you. <laughs> Maybe I'll run into you on SkyTrain one day. I don't know. That'd be funny. Our new Lamborghini Mario Kart in real life. 
Oh, these are liked videos. That's Feel the Burn Vlogs. That's not you. Check out other channels. Well, it's weird. You got popular channels. You recommend channels down here, but you don't have the, the um, module activated in the top right. I would activate the top right module. And similar to what I was talking about the last person, you got popular uploads here. Okay, that's cool. Um, Amsterdam. Interesting. Google Translate Easter eggs. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. I'd like want to watch that video. Um, so it looks like you haven't posted possibly in quite a while. I'm looking at like, yeah, like, well, like you said, it had been a year. Uh, so fair enough. Any playlists? I'm just kind of curious kind of stuff you got here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've seen you, but you know, there's like millions of people in Vancouver, so. Reacting to old videos featuring Slinky. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. As a gamer, did you ever go to EXP, the restaurant, downtown Vancouver? I love that restaurant so much, and it's gone now, and that makes me sad. I don't think I was part of the group then. My, your interests have kind of changed. You changed your name. Fair enough. Yeah. I, oh, Art Mummy signed up with notifications. Fantastic. You can get me when I'm not so tired. <laughs> I think I'm still recovering from that food poisoning. I'm not quite at 100%. Um... Someone was asking me the other day, when the Facebook group reaches 100,000 members, what should I do? I was like, marathon live stream. After two hours of this live stream, I'm like, I don't know that I could do it. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so let's see here. Uh, quite a few videos. Um, some playlists. So, I mean, you could probably put some more of your content on your home page and not so much other people's content. But again, activate the module where you recommend channels instead of having it as a line on your main channel. Um, I'm curious, uh, yeah, let's just do it now. I mean, I'm curious what's been happening with the channel that's been dormant for a year for uploads, but, you know, things still happen. Wario and Toad is your only channel tag, so you're going to want to go in and beef that up, of course. Early in the live stream, I showed how to do that. Uh, so you came to subscriber there. What was happening with the views? Okay. Hey, you know, you're hovering around 50 views a day for a channel that you're not, you know, uh, actively working on. That's not, you know, that's not bad. That's, that's actually pretty good. Um, but of course there'll be no new videos because it's been a year. So, yeah, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, I think obviously you're going to need to decide what you want your channel to be. Do you want it to be this channel? Do you want to start fresh? Um, I, I, I mean, if you're going to be sticking with the stuff, the similar kind of content, but like more modern, maybe, um, you know, maybe you're playing LA Noir on the Switch instead of, you know, Mario Kart or something. If your tastes have changed in that direction, we're still like Nintendo games, then this could still be a really good channel to build on. But if you want to do something completely different, you know, men's fashion or something, you're going to want to start a new channel. But, um, you know, you do have the subscribers here. You do have over 100 subscribers. So, um, do you have a custom URL for this? Just kind of going back in my experience here. Ba -ba -ba. Um, so, I mean, yeah, the custom URL thing, um, if you don't have one yet, then there's an opportunity because you can still basically rebrand the whole thing from scratch uh, using the custom URL is kind of the trigger. I kind of did that with Vacation Impossible. It used to be called Mad Cow Productions, me being Cowman and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I switched all over to Vacation Impossible. Uh, and so, and, and it isn't a problem. The URL for Cowman still works, but it doesn't create any issues. Uh, and so, I mean, you've got that subscriber base, which isn't bad for, for a dormant channel. Um, I was at 34 subscribers for years, uh, before I kind of, it was November, 2016. And I just decided, I was like, you know what? I'm sick of not being a success on YouTube. I'm going to start taking it a little bit more seriously. I'm going to start learning about it. And that's when I started joining groups. It was like a month later I joined small YouTubers boost. So, um, yeah, you can, you can take a dormant channel and, and just kick it into gear and you've got already that 167 subscribers and the views, your, your view count was 72,000 views. That is not nothing. Um, so yeah, if it's on brand, I say stick with it and, you know, yeah, come up with it. Don't feel like you need to make things uh, go away. How many views do you do a month? I'm not sure who you're asking there, Ms. London. And you know, about the whole thing about having old videos that aren't great or whatever. I mean, I have plenty of those. So, I mean, I'd like to think most of their flaws are in image quality because I started filming in 2001. And so I was like, and in 2001, I was encoding it, um, bring it back or do logs. Well, I mean, take some time and figure it out. And, and when you're certain, 
then yeah, make that decision. If it's going to be vlogs, maybe new channel. But if you're going to bring it back and do games and stuff, stick with it, uh, I would say. Um, and yeah, you know, focusing on school and, and, and whatever is going on in real life is an absolutely good thing to do. You got to take care of yourself first. Uh, you know, the day job's got to come first. So that's fine. But um, anyways, yeah, I think we're probably going to wrap things up. Uh, I've been live for nearly two hours, so uh, I think that's a pretty good run. I don't think I've done one of these since January 11th. So if I didn't get to your channel or you just enjoyed this and want to come back, I recommend that you subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. Um, this particular live stream, I didn't really have a hint that I would be doing this today until about 2 p.m. right now, uh, so that was five hours ago. Uh, and even then I wasn't exactly sure hundred percent that it would happen or if, um, uh, if, uh, how long I'd be able to go for or when I would start. So I posted like, you know, I think I posted in small YouTubers boost. I was like, Oh, 60% chance in the forecast of live stream. And thankfully it was able to happen. Um, but even then I was estimating it'd be around three or four. I didn't go live until five. So, um, the point being is that I don't always, I'm not able to always to give great notification in advance of when I'm doing this. So if you have notifications turned on when I go live, you can get the notification, hop on in chat nice and early, and hopefully I can get to your channel or your tutorial or your request. Um, so that's a big part of that. But we do also try to semi-schedule these. And so the next semi-scheduled one is Friday, February 1st. Uh, I plan to go live probably sometime around... I'm going to say 1 p.m. Pacific, probably between, I'll, I'll probably be live between 1 and 3 p.m. Pacific on Friday, February 1st. That's the plan. Life might get in the way, but that's what I'm going to do my best to be here for you guys for another two-hour session then. And who knows when I might find another hour or two to cobble together for another one of these. So uh, yeah, do uh, subscribe with notifications on for that reason. Uh, I also have tutorials and things that I'm working on. My next uh, tutorial is uh, how TubeBuddy can help you when uploading a new video. Uh, that's going to be relatively in depth. I just recorded the voiceover work for that earlier today. Uh, I also just did my second unboxing for the, uh, Vista print promo box. So I hope to get that up, uh, sometime soon on this channel as well. And of course I got to plug my main channel, Vacation Impossible, one more time. Uh, got a lot of stuff coming out there. So that's pretty cool. We're going to have a video coming out soon-ish where we go and we hug sloths. That's kind of cool. Uh, we go to Honduras and we slug and we hug sloths and it's great. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for me, uh, because I am vacation impossible. Uh, I try to end these things with a challenge in the style of mission impossible. So, uh, your mission, if you choose to accept it is to go on your channel and make sure that you have end cards added to all of your videos, go back, start at your oldest video and see if there's an end card. And if there is like somewhere where you can put it, you know, towards the end of the video, even if you don't have a space necessarily that was dedicated for end cards, but maybe there's some white space in a video, like, uh, like right now, if this was the end of the, my video in the box here, I could put like some end card stuff here. If it just happened to be some space that nothing was happening in. So that is my challenge. If you choose to accept it, Go and make sure that all of your videos have end cards beginning with your oldest. And like I said before, if you need a template, highly recommend TubeBuddy, link below, affiliate link. But I highly recommend it. Even the cheapest paid option gets you those sample pack from Roberto Blake where you can use those for your videos going forward, which I highly recommend. So that is it for me. This live stream will self-destruct in five seconds.